Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is another episode of Conscious Reconstruction and the whole gang, 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 gang is back in the motherfucking building. I got Just Charles back from a long hiatus. Yeah, well, it's only two weeks. He took five naps. <laughs> and we got Ash in the building. <laughs> That's not five untrue. Naps. <laughs> it's it's like, like, five naps, y'all. You believe this I shit? I normally don't. Yeah. You have to understand. On. I'm a person who normally doesn't even nap. He naps all the time. Don't let I this don't. F- man Tony be you. taking power naps. But I don't normally nap throughout the day. I just, once I'm asleep, I'm asleep. But Jesus Christ, having children is like. Yeah, I'm a good cat napper. I'll take me a 15 minute nap and be like, well, that was great. (laughs) I am completely recharged. Oh, it's my entire concept of children is just like completely and totally changed because it seems like children. Everyone thinks that. Well, I mean, if I guess you're willing to end up taking on the change, but me as a nephew or a uh, uncle is very different because it's just like, you know what? Children are like the tide; they gonna come in and they gonna change something inside your life, and there's nothing you can really do about that. But as a parent, you just are kind of like you're prepared for that. As a nephew or an uncle, they just come in like, "Hey, this is how we do things. This is not your home." <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't matter how you do things there. This is not your home. <laughs> you know, but, but, it doesn't but, matter but, how but. you do things here, obviously. This nigga said, this ain't your house. You tried to look at me and I'm the captain now. It's just like, well. Yeah. I'm going to tell your mama. Please don't. <laughs> well, That's what it came to doing the last day. It's just like. I'm going to tell you. Know, I have not gotten angry at you for two weeks. I need three hours consecutively alone to recharge. Or me and your mother are going to have to have a conversation. And that's what ended up happening. Because it's like, so you could not tend. Because you know, you kind of start relaxing. And it's like you get you're getting to the point where it's just like, yeah, this is like I'm I'm about to be fully relaxed. Every single point where you start getting dipping towards that, like I'm actually chilling point. Here they are. Mm-hmm. And they could they they were just there. And it's just like, ha uh-huh. I need something. What do you need? Uh, ha uh-huh. What do you want? Like, what what do you want? Uh, everything. But I want you to figure it out. I want you to play with my LOL dolls with me. No. <laughs> I Why? told you I need multiple oh consecutive God. hours. And then the issue with my, the difference was with my nephew. Oh my goodness. I don't understand why girls are so much more hard headed than the boys are. Because it feels like with my nephew, it's just like, I could put you inside a I, I could put you in a figure for a leg clock and eventually you're just not going to want to deal with me anymore. Her, she just sitting up there giggling up a storm. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> yo, nep- my nephew would have been crying by now. You're laughing at me. She said, oh, this all you got? Bet. So it's just like, all right, we got four more hours of trying to figure. So that means I'm going to sit. I sat there and I fig- finally figured out some type of clutch clutch or hold that she doesn't like. And it's just like, oh, found it. <laughs> so what we about to do? We about to sit here. So you just not about to let me go. Well, you lied and said you would leave me alone. <laughs> and that's not tenable. We're not doing that. <laughs> it's just like, I what do you mean? Are you going to leave me alone? Yes. Well, I can't believe you now because you lie. (laughs) So we had, we had our entire, like entire lock for lying to me. Cause I mean, I expect children to lie, but it's just like, at least don't lie on anything. I can actually call you out about like literal conversations that we had, that we had. It's just like, Hey, leave me alone. And it's just like, all right, that will then I go back upstairs and I come back down. And it's just like, and sometimes there would just be days like I was talking to Tony the entire time. I would just pop up and it's just like, no one's here and the child is here. And it's just like that would be so unacceptable for me. It's just like, no, no, no. We're not doing that. That's the one thing we're not doing. It's just like, but we didn't have any other choice. You could have asked. <laughs> Yeah, 
treat me like I'm a person. Like, How about I that? have things to do because I'd be like, I'd be because it's like normally me and Tony, we normally go work out in the mornings. Every there would just be mornings where I wake up, it's just like, I can't go nowhere. Why? Because the kid is here. And they look at me like, well, you can take her with you. I have anxiety. And this is not my child. <laughs> so you have to understand there's so, there's not this familiarity that I have with this child that I know, even though you say this is what she'll do. And this is what she says she'll do. She's an eight year old. She has like she has the intense span of a ferret. So. I don't know when it comes down. To, it's just like. And it's also like my overall paranoia about everything when it comes to like, well, what happens if this kid gets snatched up? Can I trust this dude? Can I trust this dude? Can I trust this dude? Man, having another having a whole nother person inside of this calculation throws everything off. Everything is basically a run set scenario. Nothing is a standard fight scenario. Like Everything's he always planned white. out his whole life and was like, "No, you're the you're the you're the unpredictable variable. I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> I can't plan around you. Well, I the problem is I have two unpredictable variables. Mm-hmm. I don't know what this one's gonna do, and I don't know what that one's gonna do. Mm-hmm. So it's like two. Yeah, not you, at the gym. That is, you can lot. never evaluate that equation. You don't. You don't know X plus Y equals five. You don't know what those other two numbers are. They could be a possibility of two things. When yeah. it's just me and him, it's like two, two plus Y equals five. Oh, that's three. <laughs> now I got four. What? It's like maybe I'm evaluating three. So that means I have five. I know what five is and I need to come out to 10, but I have five plus X plus Y. And it's just like, well, this cannot be evaluated. <laughs> Snake just explained this shit in math. Okay, anyway, what's the topic? Oh, yeah, this is just going like straight to math to start explaining. We well, I mean, it's We've ultimately I'm dealing with two. I'm doing, that's the way my brain works. I see. That's not even off the rails. That's actually still on the rails. If mm. I was starting using like liter, literary soliloquies or stuff like that, yeah, I've gone all the way off the rails. No, no, no. This is off the rails for a conversation. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's how I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Ash? I'm okay. Recovered. You don't get to just retract. Are you cutting me off? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just retracting. The, How are you doing? You already knew there was a spiel for this. There's been a spiel every every single time this week. How are you doing, Charles? <sighs> That's why I retracted my statement and went to Ash. There's no. You, just, you can't retract your statements on the middle of the answer. The retraction it. comes post the answer. No, no, no. <laughs> no, not at all. Not for me. That's ridiculous. Why would I wait for that? Oh, uh, I've been dealing with crazy family members, crazy everybody, Jeez. selfish people. So one person damn near, damn near got well. So I mean, it's not acceptable. The choked, incentivized, and like dictate that means that they actually got to the end of end of like the actual process and they were knocked out or does that mean at one point in time someone was actually trying to restrict their airway I don't know what you're asking well it's just like we're both which both of those actually inspire the same situation you can't choke people it's just like would you technically be choked inside of both scenarios yes okay well shit someone a family member was choked (laughs) <laughs> okay. uh, <laughs> yeah you can't choke people my battery went dead on the day that my father died or not my father my grandfather and then my then my mother's battery went dead the day of the funeral at the same house same driveway same spot uh what else happened yeah just you know a little family blood feud so ass. No fashion. <laughs> Start talking. What the fuck is your problem? I'm gonna punch you in the th- <laughs> side. I am very talented. I will punch you in the side. I will punch you in the side. I can. I will punch you in the side. I will punch you in the side. Like you kept looking at me, Chad. Be a goddamn podcast. See, Tony underestimates my power. I'm actually really good at responding with the con. Why not being a podcast with the conversation if I need to? Nah, I'm good at you looking at me and like. Ash, <laughs> Ash, <laughs> that would be start with your topic. Oh but, my god, yeah, okay, yeah. I quit. I quit. I quit. I anyway, my you. week wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I want a bison. 
Well, <laughs> well, week last week, I took off from everything. It was a pretty tough week, but I got through it. So here we are. Getting through weeks. Talking about tough weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tough weeks, you know. <laughs> I had to I had to, you know, sit and listen to a story where um a Caucasian acquaintance of mine used the N-word, hard ER. How do you guys uh have you guys ever had that experience? Mm. Have I? Yeah. I heard a lot of hard ERs this week. It was not the last two these last two weeks. But from a white person? No, from family members. Oh, <laughs> <They say nigger. laughs> it was just like That's hilarious. But only experience I've had inside of the somewhat syn- synonymous with that was uh in college. Uh, a white a white guy had a black friend and a black friend apparently said it was okay for him to call him him a nigga. So it was just like, yeah, that's my friend. And then he, I look at him, he says, that's hilarious. And I look at him as like, first things first, he does not have your best interest at heart. <laughs> and secondly, what the fuck you, what the fuck is wrong with you? And the only problem I have inside of this situation is white people always kind of clam up inside of these situations. It's just like, Ooh. <laughs> It's like, oh, it's your responsibility to correct him. No, that's like, I correct mine, you correct yours. Correct your people. Oh, he's like 25% Slavian. I have, I'm 0% Slavian, so that means he's not my people. Nigga. (laughs) (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) I wish there was other people, right? It was just me and him. His baby mama was talking to the neighbor, and he was just over there talking to me. While his daughters had to be baby dolls. And that is just, I got told a story about how they got called nigger. And, uh, yeah, shout out to that kid that did that. Cause me and my brother was talking about that. We went to, like, we went to, we went to Sandusky, a little bit past Sandusky, and it just got continuously whiter. Yes. And he was like, my little brother, <laughs> my brother was like, what if somebody just called us a nigger, Ash? <laughs> no, like, what if I called them a nigger? What if I just yelled out the car and called them a nigger? I'm like, that's fucking hilarious. Do it. <laughs> They're going to be perplexed yeah. as fuck. Yeah, they were. Nigger back. <laughs> hey, that would be, that would be, now y'all are upset. But no, he, he, he was just like, really confused. <laughs> They were like, why did I just get called that? Called nigga, and I, yep. was like, I was like, yo, do that shit. But we couldn't find nobody really walking, so <laughs> we couldn't do why it. Why are y'all riding down the actual streets in Sandusky? We went to Target like in Amherst or some shit on our way back. And I You'd think, be going on some of the wild, aren't random misadventures. Well, once I started realizing I could do what the fuck I want when I want, mm. <laughs> it's over with. I went to Target in Amherst. What's the difference between that Target and every other Target? I was coming back and Riley's dad gave Riley money to buy gifts and she didn't want to get it tomorrow. So I'm like, I'm tired. <laughs> but I just did it to get it out the way. So I was like, oh, we'll go to Target. Man. So that's how that happened. If you must know. That's the best way of actually getting gifts by giving, be giving. Like to a certain degree, I enjoy putting in the thought to actually go out and go get the gift myself. Yeah. Because that's more so the type of person I am, but I'm also good at giving gifts, but also like as a child, being able to get whatever the fuck I wanted was also like the highest equity. I feel like now that I'm older, getting, giving a gift to an adult is a more thought provoking thing as opposed to giving a gift to a kid. Yeah. Like, what you about to do? I'm about, you just about to get whatever toys hot. Exactly. They usually tell how much, how much they like the toys, but an adult, like you really got to put some thought into that shit. Some real thought, but like, no, I thought that was better than just riding around in awkward conversation with this nigga. Like, Thanks. <laughs> Cause he wanted to do it at first. He's like, no, I'll just give you the money. Like, like yeah. Woo. Thanks for Yeah, thanks for just avoiding showing up. I'm not fucking talking. Look at you. Doing things minutes. for the daughter and making life easy for me. Yeah. That's how things should be, right? <laughs> so anyway, you know what? Sorry to you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just spiraled into family time. I was like, all right, well, that's cool. Mm, that's my good that's my good hostess skills you know how I got back to family time and you know what I can talk about now my family no <laughs> no no you can't no you can't because I guarantee I will move move into my neighbor that was having family time 
And then I he, like he's trying he to got battle it out hard on ER. transitions. Yeah, yeah, because he's tripping. Only unconscious reconstruction can do yeah. battle in a transition. You, got, yeah. <laughs> you ain't gonna Charles, find that on Judge you're, Button, you're, is y'all? You're, you're, nah. you're a man. Bury that emotion deep down. Deep, deep, deep. Anxiety. No. Anxiety doesn't get buried, Tony. No. You don't do that. Put it in a box. Nope. You're not doing that. Like this, that big no. job. Mm-hmm. Bury that. You put a flower on top of it. Devil. And let it grow up. That. Absolutely not. And We're not doing that in 2021. <laughs> 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 nope. I don't know if you're doing you that in 2021. Absolutely it's fucking the, it's not. It's a term from Adventure Time. It's just like that's what Finn does with with any traumatizing event that has happens to him. He says, lock it in the box, throw away the key. Yep, lock it that's in the box. That's gonna be a problem later. Throw it away the key. Yeah. And then I will fight the emotion know what out you of need you. To do? <laughs> you plant an apple seed on top of it so a great tree grows. An angry ass tree? That you an ugly, horrible apple, ass tree. A apple tree spirit <laughs> that throws burning apples. apples. Yeah, you don't know why she's not producing you great fruit. Don't worry about it's the fruit. Just, don't oh, worry about the fruit. The tree is just to cover up the spot. The apple <laughs> I'm here for the apple blossoms. Yeah, we're just here to look at it. That's Yo, it. Oh, raggedy ass trees. Y'all tired of sprouting raggedy ass trees? Let me know how that go for y'all now. Uh-oh. Oh, no, no. Let's it, talk about that. All it, that emotion on it like that. Let's see how y'all eyes are going now. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> I mean, so emotionally, I'm stunted, but. Not great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, mostly, I'm stunted, but everything else, the logic's coming out great. Yeah, see, keep that shit See how me being get, I can come up with pop like very easy math related analogies for li- real life situations. Yeah, that comes from the logic gotta, side. Got to keep the emotions uh-huh. locked up away. No, uh-huh. I mean I t- almost have family members try and pry open a box that pry open the box in the last two weeks. No, that was a good idea. Take that box and rebury it, Charles. Deeper, <laughs> <laughs> bury it even deeper. Oh, uh-huh. I just remember things no one think thought and, I remember, and, and then, then do then a then tribal then. dance on top of the burial site, and then you to too. your ancestors, oh, my and ass- hope that they keep it locked up. <laughs> do some sealing techniques. What Whatever you, you need to do, so that way it doesn't come back for a thousand years. It's not. Oh no, it's coming back for four thousand years. It's going. That's how you see. This is how you end up with poor, poorly emotionally adjusted, Tony. And don't even know why you mad. Just mad, nigga, because you doing tribal dances or shit. That <laughs> oh, needs I know to be. all the reasons why I'm mad with everyone that I have to deal with. Well, you don't need. Well, to. I don't have to deal with. I have all. <laughs> I know all the reasons. See, no, why I'm you're going to be happy because you look at this great tree you grew. So I, interesting looking with his twisted roots and base. I know why hmm, I'm look mad at that. At all of the relatives that I'm angry at. I'm telling you, Charles, you just got to bury it. And I'm Deep. also trying, I'm trying to get all my family, specifically my female family members in the train of, yo, if these people aren't being a positive force to your life, you should probably just ditch them. But they're like, well, this is all we got. No, you got to teach. See, Charles, you're doing it wrong. You got to teach them how to bury their emotions first, and then, not, and then they can get to the logic. You I'm not that. sure. Well, you're trying to logic them why they have emotions. That's not going to work. Okay, what you have to understand is I'm not. Mm, I don't even know how to even grapple this situation because I've never really dealt with a woman that's buried her emotions the way men do. And I'm not sure. It's not going to happen. So. I'm sending you down a fruitless endeavor, but you do it. <laughs> it's like, you're right, because it, does, it doesn't work like but that. As you do that, like, Ash, have you ever emotions. ran into a woman that's actually literally just buried all of their emotions? And Not even me. I'm I'm a pretty tough cookie when it comes to shit like that, but I'm not like y'all. Y'all just don't think about it. It don't never come up. Like, now y'all just keep going until y'all 50? Nigga, what? <laughs> Mine's definitely come up like... You know what I'm saying? And it shows, but you niggas got a whole new level. But just also the good thing, because like you said, you need to learn a level of detachment, but you niggas have taken that and mastered the fuck out of that well, shit. Well, my entire thing is I've tr- tried to get my Turn that shit into the one piece. I've been trying to, <laughs> I've been trying to get my fam, my, these female members, because it's just like, we just need to annex some people. Mm-hmm. We need to get, vote them off the familial like island. Like Emotions. Famil- I need to get them off. You don't want me to not tap into my emotions because for the most part, if I use the actually a logical basis for everything, like the entire conversation that we just had about white people using the N word is just like, functionally, there's a, 
it's literally just a lot of bad emotions attached to that word. Exactly. See, oh, so, that's yeah, what I was about to ask. So now you getting them. Are do you think people get emotional over white people using the word nigger? Yes. Hmm. No. What logic is there, but <laughs> I mean, because I mean, I personally don't get offended by it. I just don't give a fuck. I'm not telling white people to say nigger, but I also don't give a fuck if you do. You got to suffer through them consequences. Somebody came at me and said it. I, I might laugh, to be honest with you. It's just a funny word to me. I don't eh, doesn't really get to me in here. You know? I guess it more just surprises me mm-hmm. by the people that do say it and then the ones that don't. So, yeah, all right, well, it doesn't surprise me at all. Mm-hmm. Well, I usually just for it, everybody I meet just a blanket level of, well, you're a person. The end. And until you start doing just different things to color in that, like, mm-hmm. outline of being a person, I don't really like put anything in there because I feel like that's rude. But motherfuckers just sure be adding stuff in. And I'm like, well. <laughs> Like, I don't think in the situation I was in that the dude is racist. But I also think that you don't have, like... You don't have a latitude for this. You don't have, like, the depth and tact of, like, how to have a conversation like this. It's, which is fine. You're not, like, a Nick Wright or something like that. You're not eloquent enough to have this conversation and then understand where it is a thematically and, like, because it's the... It's, because for the majority of the times, there is probably a word or a phrasing or something else that could have been used inside of this thing. It is like I, I was sitting there next to this kid and this dude just blur- called me the N word. Same thing. I've been across. more okay with him using the actual word with the hard ER if the follow up was like a nuanced and thought provoking conversation. Not but just to blanket look confusion. Me blankly, it'd be <laughs> like, well, what the fuck you want me to do with this? Evaluate like, this, please. Why am I you involved in this? this? Yeah, like I don't know why I had to be involved in this. So that's more of my point. It's like I don't understand why you involved. Is that's me what's popping in, in the streets right now. Just calling white people niggers. I guess. I mean, it's probably funny. <laughs> We're taking it back. <laughs> it's probably funny as it's shit. It's probably hilarious as fuck to that little boy. You know what? You know what? Nigger. <laughs> yeah, it probably was. He probably looked him dead in his face and was like, I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> you don't fucking scare me. This nigga really just put his foot down. There you go. Shout out to that fucking kid. Like, yeah. How'd you like them apples? You confused? So was my ancestor. <laughs> Shout out to that so man. those poor Spanish people coming down there. You guys are saying the word wrong. Negro. It's negro. 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 No, nigger. Yeah. <laughs> Stop pushing our language. You fucking. You guys ruined everything by just touching it. Negro. You guys brought dandelions, bed bugs, and the black plague. And you smallpox. Bring, and smallpox. Don't forget Man. the smallpox. It's just like, oh, smallpox you can say like Africa has a malaria uh, problem. Malaria didn't get here until the UK. We had no, no, no other parts of the earth had problems until you. Have you had the chicken pox? Mm, I think when no, I was but younger. I think I've been immunized for it. I had the mumps. The mumps? What are those? That sounds terrible. Pretty much just like imagine just having bumps like all over your skin. Do they itch? No. Okay. It is considered to be contagious, <laughs> but it's not call like them useless like bumps. <laughs> yeah, useless as fuck. Like what are they? What are you? What are you breaking out for? Coming. Like what the fuck is the point? Like so you just got these bumps a mile away. It's not yeah. like you just fucking useless. <laughs> yeah, I just don't understand the point of them. Like <laughs> useless ass shit. I mean, most diseases don't have a point but to kill you. I but how do they kill you? Like, like, what do they do? This nigga was waiting for some interesting. No. Yeah, mom's just saying <laughs> hello. Get out of here. <laughs> Like, I know that <laughs> fucking chicken pox can turn into, what is it, scabies? Mm-hmm. Or, um, and that's really, like, can be deadly to adults and shit like that. So I get how it could fuck you up. What the fuck? If this shit just makes your arms a little bumpy. <laughs> nigga. Useless. I get your ass out of here. I remember. This nigga said, oh, kill yourself. Oh, brilliant ass arm. Well, fuck it. Leading the blind. <laughs> Here, uh-huh. touch my back and, and see the way. What are you talking about? <laughs> Yo, bubby ass. <laughs> you need to go sit out somewhere. 
<laughs> you you just was all bumpy for no reason. This nigga caught a uh, whole disease and fucking useless. Yeah. Still useless ass. He looking for something and it don't say nothing <laughs> good about it. Anything. He can't find nothing good about this disease besides the fact that it make you bumpy. This shit mm. garbage as fuck. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh this well, hard, and I saw it coming. His, oh. Most of the viral infection <laughs> primarily affects the saliva your... producers. Yes, and the, located near so it makes your teeth. tongue bumpy? Uh, oh. Oh, that's weird. It's oh, really weird. Bumpy <laughs> ass tongue. Oh, text your mouth? <laughs> Got the roof of your mouth for your own town. No, my mother had that shit. You see that little baby? And it's a swole on the side of her face? Yeah. Yeah, my mommy had that. That's a mump? I guess. Like, we called her mumps after that. <laughs> I don't really. Mumpy. I don't. <laughs> you have to understand. This happened when I was in kindergarten. I don't particularly that. remember all that much. Come here, so, mumpy. You caught her mumps. I just remember. I just remember oh, your mother it. when she got the mumps. That's wild. Why is your mother a grown woman and get the mumps? Yeah, she had this huge ass. She don't get it much anymore, but man, that shit was so huge. Her face was just This is a viral swollen. infection and anyone can get a viral infection. But I would assume you would have gotten like the immunization. So don't you get the mumps, measles, and uh, chicken? Pox shot. Yo, that shit was, was so the measles terrible. that I had. Why the we measles? call our mommy mumps? <laughs> what the fuck are the measles? Yeah, the fact that y'all was roasting it was your mom for mommy. Having... It was close to mommy, so we was like, what's up, mumps? <laughs> oh my God, that is wild. The fact you said it was close to mommy. That is yeah. not close to mommy at all. Mom, it was close to mom, so she became mumps. mumps? <laughs> yeah, there we it. go. I had the measles. So that makes you just break out in dots? Oh, no, it gives me a fe- It gives me, I had a fever... Yada yada yada. What is the yada yada? Favorite cough, runny nose, inf- so and can it kill skin. you? I mean, anything can fucking kill you if you're if you have immune problems. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's more like it. Okay, so you had the measles. I see. Now the mumps was funnier. <laughs> go it's back like, to the I mumps. Remember, I don't remember <laughs> having a swollen jaw. Measles. There we go. <laughs> measles, <laughs> mumps, chicken pox. See, this still has nothing to do with your end work. I'm immune to the chicken pox. <laughs> it's still about me. Not at all. I'm immune to the chicken pox. No, you're not. I am. How? You're going to say that until you get old and you... No, 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 I ended up having to get the shot, but my mother literally took me around everyone that had the chicken pox trying to get me to get them. Because it's better for you to have them oh yeah. when you're younger, because then you develop an immunity and you won't get them when you're older and they won't <laughs> turn into scabies and kill the you. Kids and shit. But so, yeah, she was yeah, like, all about. <laughs> That's wild. That's <laughs> nasty as fuck. <laughs> that is nasty as fuck. Oh. I was not looking no fucking kids' hands. Yeah, you bad ass, ass nasty kids like, touching their ass. <laughs> you know how many times a kid scratches adults their have, ass? Though. Just think about because no adults have some shame, so they're not putting their hand in their asshole <laughs> as much. You know as, what people be doing in the privacy no, of their no, own day. They do you put their hand in their asshole. Don't be thinking about but it. A kid throughout the entire day, whether they in public, in private, don't no matter. They if they yeah, asshole they itch, fucking underwear in their they, ass, they, they, they going right straight in the there. They going straight asshole and get 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 out of here. <laughs> and it's like, all right, uh, kid, that's that's cool. So no, I'm not licking another fucking child's head. That's nasty. As that's fuck. always the most interesting thing. That is thing so that you nasty. Why is a man? I'm just like, saying. I thought processes. it was weird. Your mom was prostituting you like that. She was yeah, fucking all well. the kids that had fucking fucking Give chicken pox <laughs> definitely tried to get me to get chicken pox. I just. I just wouldn't get it. Not at all. I have a really high immune system. Like, oh and so no, not at all. And then so she was like, she should have not give you any orange juice and let that child cough in your face. Like, I'm here. Yeah, like, I'm I telling did. you. Listen, you want to go all the fucking way? What you talking about? I'm yeah, telling you. Yeah, just give him a kiss on the lips, Lisa. Uh, <laughs> at least it was a girl. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she could have been some, on some wild shit like him. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, why is my mother like this? She's not. Come here, brother. <laughs> Let's have a conversation. But yeah, no, she definitely tried to get me to get the chicken pox. Like, it's a story that she tells. She's like, yeah, I was taking care of all the kids that had chicken pox. Nigga, what? And you just would not catch it. Why are you not telling me this story? All right, bro. What else have you done? <laughs> That's like the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, so. Sorry, Tony. You probably got a lot of always, stuff down trauma that you didn't lock away in a box. What the fuck? I remember all my trauma. My mother lock, is terrible. You just lock away with, <laughs> you just lock. My mother went into our... Uh, we lived in a two floor apartment mm-hmm. or two, uh, yeah, two floor apartment. And so she went downstairs to the fuse box. I had to be like five. 
So you know a five-year-old has no concept of what the fuck a fuse box is and that if you switch all those off, you can cut all the lights off in the house and there's no now no power. Why did my mother hit all of those after I watched Candyman to then hide? Because she got me to say Candyman and the Mary with her. God did damn. that and then disappeared. <laughs> As a I, five-year-old? Yeah, I am terrified. Like, I hate Candyman. Oh, my like, God. Even though like, I just saw the new trailer, the new trailer looks heat. But I'm even that gave me like a little sense of fear. I laugh at other scary movies. This one, I'm like, mm, I might fuck around and have nightmares <laughs> if I go and see that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that shit terrified me. Because her ass popping out of nowhere. You know what saved my life? The fact that I found the fucking corded phone. Corded phones don't work on like electricity. Oh, yeah. they so they light up when you pick them up? No. No. They, no? they just no. have her dial Cordless phones work on electricity. Oh. Corded, all you need is it to off. the phone line. So, oh, yeah. Okay. So, I was about to call 911. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I know those fucking numbers. I'm calling bitch. the cops. <laughs> And then she came out. But yeah, no, Tony found the phone and I was not playing the game. Calling the cops. I am I'm not fucking around one, with this. Shorty yeah, kind of moving yeah, on no. the And then from that point on, oh. I had like issues going up. She was like, all right, it's your bedtime. Go upstairs. Bitch, Candy Man might be up there <laughs> waiting for me. And you said to me upstairs, come with me. I'm not going by myself. I'm sitting on these stairs. Like, no, I definitely know where my trauma is at. And no, no, no. That shit was terrible. Oh, that's She's not, a horrible person. That's not even that Everybody's like, oh, your mom's so nice. Yeah, as she got older, <laughs> when she was young and first had me, no. No. I broke a TV as like a three, four year old. I like her uh, commercials. There was a Folgers commercial. I want to see it again. I poured coffee down the back of the TV. Hmm. I thought that would make the commercial come back on. It didn't. TV broke. So she got it fixed, bought a new one. There was a commercial about an ocean. I liked the commercial. I want to see the water. Poured the water down the back of the TV. Um, this time, she would just sit me in front of the TV and tell me, don't worry, son, it's going to come on. And just have me sit in front of this broke ass TV <laughs> for hours wait for the TV to work. You did it. I don't give a fuck <laughs> kind of shit is that to do to a kid. <laughs> I'm a child. Why are you playing games with me like this? Just tell me. Why are you, you playing games with my wallet? <laughs> I, I am a kid and I wasn't playing games with my wallet. Yeah, my you were, you were pouring shit down. The, what? All right. It didn't work the first time. <laughs> because because it was just... coffee. Yeah. <laughs> that was what you derived from it. Yep. I bet that you mad that my child Elijah got, well, coffee doesn't go behind the TV, but water is different than coffee. I knew that is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I got so, young Sheldon S type explanations. Father, oh man, why does, uh, don't put water near electrical things. It'll break them. Okay. I was also the kid that hid behind the couch and stuck a bobby pin into the electrical socket and then proceeded to try and get it out and he kept saying, ouch, ouch, <laughs> ouch. Because every time I would try to grab it, it would shock me. She deserve the so, existence that she got. <laughs> <laughs> that's you like, a, what? You be out you here trying the existence to, that you got. You can't yeah. be out here upset. It's just like, I, she's a horrible parent. You <laughs> out here pushing every single boundary. She was a great parent, but just mean. <laughs> It was just like, no. Just, just mean. You can't be out here thinking bobby pins and outlets. I mean, it didn't be. Why not? I had the bobby pin and there was an outlet. Let's see how this goes. I, and I found out. This uh, is shocking. <laughs> 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 you have to understand, you were out here doing whole things that I never even considered doing as a child because it's just like, that seems dumb. What are you doing? And you're out here, no, nah, this is live experiments time. Yeah, I don't thought... know unless I do it. I'm not Ouch. trusting Bill Nye. Fuck Bill Nye for real. I mean, <laughs> Bill no, Nye. I didn't Bill, not trust Bill, Bill, Bill Nye, Bill. but if Bill Nye is doing it, I was the kid that did not trust him. It's all right. Let's let's do it too. I want to experiment. Yeah, I had a real life science kit that had labels and warnings that said if you swallow this, you will die. You could. Die. I would pour that into plants <laughs> to try to see what would happen to them. Hey, I was hey. terrible. Yeah, I was like, you know what? 
put all of this into you. Now I realize that I probably would have needed to do it on a consistent basis. Not <laughs> just the one time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Die, bitch. That's how you said it. Arthur's ending. <clears throat> no one I likes Arthur, but you, Charles. Arthur? Arthur? Arthur. The Arthur? Hey. Yes. Hey, hey, what a wonderful <laughs> time with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Charles, I'm blinking <laughs> <laughs> once. <laughs> I don't think this guy wants me to say it. <laughs> she like, she might like Arthur. No, I loved Arthur. Who mm-hmm. are you talking about? You're hey, hey, Arthur, B A R K. What? Arthur was lit when I was watching it as a child, but uh-huh. the fact that he's ending now and they've completely changed it don't really matter to me. They it's not old it? school Arthur. I mean, this child has been in third grade for 25 years. And I need him to be the exact same. Yeah, I've been. I I was always waiting for him to actually advance a grade. That's when I was gonna come back. <laughs> I was thinking this about him to grow up. It's like I will watch an episode of Arthur if they actually send this motherfucker to the fourth grade. No, yeah, that's how I first knew apartments was a thing because Francine lived in an apartment and yep. I didn't understand the concept of apartments because I never lived in one. So what the fuck are y'all doing up there? <laughs> what the fuck is that? Your family living in an apartment? All well, you what niggas you mean? in an apartment, yeah. <laughs> like, you know the other I lived thing? in an apartment till the third grade. I didn't know. Apart- I've never stepped foot in an apartment. You know, I've like, never my actually lived in an apartment like, in my entire life. Yeah, all families way, don't live in apartments. I didn't understand if families grade. could live in apartments. Yep, Francine used to share a, share a room with her like teenage her own fucking sister. teenage sister, and then she <clears> moved out to the living room with just a divider. And then now me knowing things about Dow based on what her father's job was. A garbage that dude man. Was just cheap. Exactly. That's why I was hella confused because my dad was a garbage man. I'm like, we live in a he house. Swap. What are y'all out here doing? Understand. Next thing you know, I look at it that is just like, wait, no, you you run you run the entire facility. Dude, you get paid hundred and fifty some odd thousand dollars. <laughs> and you got these child children out here staring in the room is just and my like, dad was the garbage truck driver. Like I was hella confused. Like I'd never seen a family live in an apartment. I'm not joking with y'all. None of that shit hit me like how y'all fit? <laughs> a whole family? Well, I like, guess that makes sense because I didn't really think about houses because like I lived in the apartments we lived in were called College Town because mm-hmm. my mother went to Sac State and they owned this entire like apartment community. So all our friends lived in College Town. So all my friends lived in apartments. So oh I had all my no friends concept lived in houses. I'm like living. We would always be around the apartments, hanging out and playing and running around in a little like quad. I'm like, nah, just there was like single a little people do this laundry house. A couple of it wasn't even like offsite laundry. Um, like how some of the apartments have here. It's just a couple of little um, buildings down. You would go out there. It was its own separate building. I had to play outside. My mom washed clothes. And just chill. That's yeah. another thing I've never experienced. I've never not had a washer and dryer. Of the home. Did you ever take the school bus? Yes. Mm-hmm. What'd you got? What's the wildest thing you guys did on the school bus? I was a pretty normal ass kid, Tony. I did, I did nothing wild on the school bus. All right. What about you, Ash? You got any wild stories from the school bus? From the school bus? Nothing that's coming to my memory, no. Oh, y'all making me feel like weirdo, but fuck it, I'll share anyway. <laughs> All right, I got two stories. One, I used to ride the school bus. And I was sitting like the middle, and I would sit next to this little white girl. And every day she'd be just doing this like stuff in the corner, and I didn't know what the fuck was going on, but it's none of my business, so I'm living life. One day I decided to ask her, what are you doing? eating paper what do you want some hmm. sure <laughs> so now tony is eating paper and tony is like actually this shit is lit i like you eat some paper i'm about to eat paper all the time so we on the bus eating the fuck out of our notebook papers away. yeah this nigga over here chilling with his friends and then he finally was just like <laughs> what you doing he leaned his head back like Hey, yo, little, <laughs> snow, hey, little snow bunny, what yeah, you doing what you over doing there? Like, yeah, yeah. And so I started eating and paper. And she told you. She wasn't even like... Yeah, she was children like, are not ashamed of anything paper. that they do. Not yeah. at all. Because she straight said it as an adult. She'd be like, ah, well... Yeah. Paper. She's like, no, yeah. you gonna run paper. into her one day and, and she's she gonna be like, hey, paper and girl. And shared with me. Yeah. And she gonna be like, oh, don't she talk about be that. Skirt. Yeah. She gonna be talk about that now yeah but that was hilarious Eating paper <laughs> other story so i was in um summer school um and so i'm on the bus one day and i'm staring at this girl and not even staring at her just looking at her and 
she slaps me. <laughs> and then I get off. At, at, she slaps me at my stop. And I get off the bus and I tell my mother. My mother gets in her car and chases the bus <laughs> okay, down. T- okay, Tyler. Stops creator. the bus. Gets on the bus with me. Yells at the bus driver. Takes me to the girl. Tells the girl that God gave me eyes to look at whatever the fuck I want to look at. And then told me to slap the girl. Well, damn. <laughs> and then got me off the bus, got me back in the car, then we went home. This is the reason why you have that. This is the reason why you enjoy that Vince Staples album so much. Because it's yeah. like, hey, that's yeah. my mama. Yeah, yeah. My, I identify wholeheartedly with Tyler was like, yeah, my mother's crazy. It's like, Vince, Tyler, my mother is right along with y'all. <laughs> she was super I won't say gang related because there's no gangs in Cleveland, but I'll say gangster because she was doing a lot of wild drug related shit. And then also like Tyler's mom, where she's like, I'm going to be super wildly protective of my son. She told a foreign um, English teacher, like the teacher was from um, the Middle East. And she taught an English class. She gave me a bad grade and then was, but her reasoning was I I had dyslexia and was on um, 504, so I shouldn't be in the honors class. Oh. My mother proceeded to tell her that she couldn't even speak English correctly, so she shouldn't be teaching English <laughs> in front of her, her and the principal. It was a very interesting time. My brother got the most of my crazy mom, but I've gotten tidbits of crazy mom. Yeah, crazy mom is a... a yeah, now she a, got older, she chilled the fuck out, but it would still come out randomly yeah especially like in like they, drive-thrus like with the food i'm like yo it seems like they chill out once they get older but you know when she was young, she wild as fuck i was like all right yep. yeah i got this is my mother. yo i got the one story that was funny as shit she said that one of her friends took her to this party and the room was completely dark but with nothing but candles lit and my mother was like <laughs> the fuck going on here and as her eyes adjusted to the darkness she could see people hunched over lighting up pipes <laughs> i'm like ma who invited you to the fucking crackhead party i don't know but i got the fuck out of there <laughs> that's one of the, the funniest party. shit to me don't the way she know. she said my eyes adjusted and i could just see people hunched over i'm like how did you get in why oh they could have been talking reefer uh, this was the 80s. That could have been it. Want to hear a crazy story about my uncle and mm-hmm. my mom? Okay. So my mom, my dad, my uncle, I, they own this like apartment building in East Cleveland, like off of St. Clair. Okay. Um, They have this huge party. They have a get high party, as they call it. It's a lot of liquor, a lot of Coke, and a lot of weed there. Um, party's over. They send everybody home. My uncle leaves. Door is locked. He comes back, banging on the door, trying to get high. They're like, no, ain't no more dope. Go home, go to bed. He come the entire night, like three hours straight, to the point (laughs) that my dad opens the door. They fight and fall down two flights of stairs. They fight outside. My dad hits him with a pot in the head. (laughs) And then leaves. <laughs> my mother is like, well, you're not leaving us here with this crazy nigga. So she locks him out of the entire apartment complex because he lives across the hall from them. So he's banging, trying to get in. They're not letting him in because he mad. Talk about he about to fuck them up because he upset. So he decides that since they won't let him into the apartment, that the next best thing to do is to set it on fire. So he proceeds to surround it with gasoline and try and set it on fire as my mother has to call my father to come back and get him. Mm. So, yeah. He's you a pothead. stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> crackhead stories. Yeah. You got another fucking exactly. level. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. My uncle was definitely on that as a feed. And, well, it was a feed. Not all that shit no more. But when he was, it was definitely crazy as fuck. Man. He was like, you know what? Man, I would set all y'all on fire. It makes it Nigga, fun. It's your an apartment girl in, is in East here. Cleveland. Your kids are in here. Your whole family's in here. Man. What are you doing? Yeah, my brother would tell me the story. There was no logic inside of that whatsoever. <laughs> Not Ain't no fucking logic when you on crack. What? <laughs> there is some logic. What? Where do I get the next crack from? Mm. 
<laughs> the like, means to damn sure ain't logical. <laughs> the means to get that shit have gone completely in the realm of unlogic. It's Jeez. just like I'm setting this bitch on fire. Man, uh, your crackhead story. One, this is made out of bricks. I mean, that's not gonna be that easy. Two, if you have money for gasoline and all this other stuff, why didn't you just go buy some? Why is he trying to reason <laughs> what crackheads do? It's just like why would he want to go buy some when he know crack is in his bar next door <laughs> that he should have access to because this is his brother. So yeah. But yeah, so um What's the next topic? Where the fuck are we? We were talking about uh white people used to do work. I was completely into hope. Uh, how do you feel about Gary Owens? He's getting divorced from his uh wife of seventeen years. Mm, uh, that Gary shit was Owens. shocking. Gary Owens? Yeah. Cause that's his whole bit the is really basing it guy? off of no, nah, he the he kind of redhead and pale. You never just seen type him? it in. Just look up Gary Owens. I mean, he's like, who the fuck is this? I bet you well, all know him. I, Gary Owens, I remember being that like white guy. He's a white comedian. Where's my dare go right there, Gary Owens, the first one. I mean, he just was like, no, nah, I'm not gonna click it with the mouse. I gotta type it. I remember, Charles said he don't really watch me watching comedians anyway. No, I know, but that's him. Okay. Why do I care about him getting divorced? His wife is black, and his whole bits usually be kind of sort of based off of his interactions with black people and based on his wife. Was Uh-oh. he caught cheating? Is that what happened? Because usually that's what happened after 17 years. Someone's had enough of your fucking cheating. I don't know, but from <clears throat> the thing that I read, he went on Wendy Williams and kind of like spoke about her. The and wife? This- yeah, the wife, and just kind of elaborated on the situation and the kids and everything like that. Uh, and then she said he was a deadbeat dad. But Wendy Wim said that? No. Oh, the, the wife. The, the okay. wife. But then he was like, how am I a deadbeat dad? Our kids are grown. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they've been together 23 years, yep. and they were married for 17. So I was like, both our kids are grown. So I don't really know how he's a deadbeat dad, but she's seeking $44,000 a month in spousal support. Woo, they ain't had no prenup, did they? They married when they was in love and he was just unsuccessful. Aww. Well, the problem with that is, I don't know what they base child support on. Do they based off your income or your savings? Well, no, your she income. wants spousal support. Yeah, I understand that. But, like, for spousal so support, it's typically based off of uh, your income, I'm assuming. Of your income. But because he's a comedian, Basing that off of his last year's income is probably not going to be the best move that you ever did. Bro, they get in your ass. That's weird. How you pay for the fucking person you're not with no more? <laughs> That's what, uh... That's crazy. What's I don't his get name that. has to do? Um, Brittany's still playing Kevin Federal. I... Not her. Uh, Kelly Clarkson. Oh, what's that, man? Kelly Clarkson Dr. Dre. Pay. He has to pay um his wife $300,000 a month. Dang. Hmm. It's a little less than that. It's like two hundred and ninety something thousand, but nigga, that don't even for matter. For all intents and purposes, it's a, <laughs> it's a house for a normal person every single month. Yeah. How you pay somebody you know? A couple houses with? every single month. Mm-hmm. Depending upon where you buy. Yeah. Here is you can buy yourself an entire you can, you can start it. buying the street and, and be done with that project and like it's half more a feasible year. for you. There's this like a, one clip I saw this Latina chick talking about how the dude she was fucking with, they was together. Now they're not fucking with each other like that no more. They're still paying for her like apartment and car. She was like, yeah, I just feel like he should. And I'm like, but she wouldn't say the other part. Like, I don't think she wanted to say the other part, which is I'm going to assume she was still fucking that man. But everybody was around her like, that don't make no sense. <laughs> not together no more. But I'm like, oh, she's not trying to say that he probably still coming over when he damn well fucking please but that's an assumption I could be a million percent wrong but she just wouldn't elaborate further why she just thought that was right she was like no I just think that you should yeah she said no I'm not gonna move out and I'm not gonna leave she said if you upgrade my life why should I have to leave bitch because you're no longer with me Mm -hmm. and we weren't married what are you talking about go away I didn't establish a quality of life for you yeah, she said that nigga was still doing it. No, I'm like, even if I did establish a quality of life, because I've done that before. No, 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 no. I 
I have established the quality of life for me, and you are coming along with me. Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, that was a weird thing. No, 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 no. no, no. Get this actually, anymore. You're, just, that, you're, that's what's you're happening. existing in my way. If you still got to pay for all your own shit for the most part. Mm -hmm. like, oh, no. Oh, I mean, I'm not the type. I don't think I'm the type of boyfriend, or if I'm just dating you, I don't think I'm. I mean, buy. I've I'm had... more likely to give you some money towards your own car than to actually get your own to actually have a car payment. For well, you. see, like there was no necessarily like car payment, but she lived with me. I paid for all the food, the groceries, stuff. Everything. I'm going to be doing it. That's all things I'm going to be doing anyway. It's like all, I'm buying I for paid the food. all the bills. There I was live no here. Bill that she had. This this is my home. I live here. Is mm -hmm. That's still her lifestyle has been completely changed. I understand that. She I'm uses not it that way. You that when you leave, I though. did not change your lifestyle. <laughs> like, your I'm life not, just got easier for dating me. I'm not facilitating you having a nicer apartment and eating the way we eat and going to places we go. No, no, no. That's that's not what we do here. What well, if you were still fucking her? Would you still do that? No. No. <laughs> no. You don't be like. Yeah, you now would. we're just having fun times. Yeah, in your apartment that you pay for. Oh, uh -oh you know, I mean, more than likely, you're probably not. Because I bet, there. I bet, like I said, an assumption, I'm not saying she did that. I'm I not bet sure a million percent because he was still doing it. It wasn't like, well, if he's still doing it, I'm sure he's still fucking. Like, I'm saying, if, if I'm still doing it, yes, I'm still fucking. Yeah. But am I doing it? No, because I look at it like, well, what's the, what's the real point of this? Like, Outside of the vagina from you, like unless it's like just that fire, mm -hmm. which I don't think there's anything. I'm not really just that fire. I mean, eh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's just like you haven't had the right stuff, Charles. Yeah, I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> I need to keep you in this house. Yeah, you, yeah. you know, go nowhere. I know where you're at. <laughs> I need to know it's where like, you I are. I have changed. I have changed your quality of life. Why? Have keys to the access yeah, to that and shit. I got keys and I'm walking through. I'm coming in. All different random times. You're not gonna be able to plan nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when this nigga gonna pop up. You're right. It's just like Monday. I, I came at five p.m. Tuesday. I came at one a.m. <laughs> Wednesday. I came at one p.m. <laughs> Thursday. I came at three a.m. Friday, I stayed the entire day. <laughs> Saturday, I didn't even show up. You was waiting for me. <laughs> Sunday, I came for five minutes in the morning, said I would be back, and then just never came. <laughs> yeah. At this point, you're being purposely obtuse. Yeah, I, no, I am. <laughs> yeah, no, you're never going to have no plan. Like, if it's like that, and I'm willing to pay for it. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. We're we not doing that. Like, stop playing with me. Well, like, you, so that means you're keeping an old timey mistress, basically. But, like, I'm really not looking to you do that. You better be sitting up here looking out at sea, waiting for me. See, I don't want it to point. be the mistress situation. And see, that's why for me personally, I'm like, ah, I couldn't really see myself doing that. It's just like, you not my chick. Mm -hmm. And I got to pay for this household and my household. What are the benefits outside of sex? <laughs> it's just like let's get to the brass tacks of this. Cause like I like sex a lot. But you know what the one thing that every woman I've met has come with? Vagina. And you know what that vagina's for? Sex. <laughs> so the one thing that I like a whole lot that we keep doing, I could do with anybody else I met, and I wouldn't have to pay for this apartment anymore. Hmm. You got to get out. <laughs> <laughs> I just I, you, gotta, gotta, you gotta, gotta get out. Uh, this is the reason why I put the apartment in your name. Everything is in your name. Here you go. Nah, maintain your quality of life. That's a smart move. <laughs> it's just like I like that move. Yeah, because once I put it in your name and then leave, because you she was the it. chick that was on the thing talking about. I probably just start breaking shit. Bitch, what are you talking? Why are you a child? <laughs> Why are you going to destroy stuff because you're mad because I don't want to pay for your life anymore? That's weird. Who are you? Mm -hmm. Who yeah. raised you? Nah, I wonder I who left who inside of this scenario. Because if you out here leaving him, you didn't really think about the logistics of this very well. It it's either that really or matter. he's way kinder than I am. Because I probably never would have done any of this to begin with. It's just like, oh, what'd you do? I gave you a allowance and you sp and you just so happened to spend that on those things. I was not explicitly paying for those things. 
you no longer get that now it's because you're no longer with me but see that'd be like scary shoo, shoo. because i didn't know i think i don't I think it was having a conversation down here one night with jones and this guy i couldn't think of his name i was about to call him mark anyway <laughs> Marky Mark and the Funky bunch. I don't know why. I'm like, <laughs> it just went blank. That's all right. I support that. Um, we was talking about how, like, it's really rare to have a girl that had, like, a developed, like, mind and, like, a life outside of just being cute or having a vagina. He was like, no, that's not common. I'm like, how? It's all these bitches running around here with degrees and shit. And I'm like, but why wouldn't you have, like, a developed, like... I have had Anything the hardest time in that. the world finding a girl that actually has actual hobbies. Yeah. And that don't include going out with their friends and getting drunk. Those aren't hobbies. Those are things that you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they'll call them a hobby. So like, I want to make it clear to, <laughs> to the listener that I uh, like no be on that please. top of that list. Yeah, that cannot be on the like, list. I've I vexed so many women. What do you like to do with your free time? Oh, I go out. I do this. Well, what do you do when you can't go? Because you're not going out all the time. What do you do on a Saturday at 3 p.m.? That was crazy to me. And I'm just like, they don't don't talk about nothing else. Like, it's I have to carry so many conversations. And I was so willing to because some of them were so cute. (laughs) (laughs) It's just like, you're, you're. You're so goddamn hot. Yep. But you are dumb. Oh, <laughs> God, are you dumb? That shit just was mom boggling to me. I'm like, they run around, they got niggas. So I was thinking, like, maybe this isn't really they don't a actually, big issue. Them niggas don't talk to them. You know what? Otherwise, <laughs> niggas are dumb. <laughs> he said so, niggas don't talk to them. <laughs> I had a question for Ash. Mm-hmm. Like, how do men approach women? Um, Usually it's, hey, how you doing? On a regular nigga that know how to approach a motherfucker. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Whatever. Oh, you look this way, that way. You know, I'd like to get to know you. Here's my number. That's normal. Okay. Any other other way, they yelling at you. (laughs) Yell at you from across the room. One nigga was like, what's your Instagram? I'm like, sir, my child is here. Why are you hitting on me? Please stop. I don't want this Where do men do that at? I was in Dollar Tree and this dude, damn girl, what's going on? I'm like, Riley over here doing her thing. I'm like, no, I mean, where do they, so where do other men do it at? Other men? If you out somewhere like maybe a bar or I'm just walking at the grocery store, it can happen anywhere. So the grocery store? <laughs> it can happen uh, anywhere. I guess this is a conversation we've been progressively having over time. Why? Like, you know, the nigga that was doing, re- you know, the people that be in Walmart now trying to say you spectrum, that nigga tried to hit on me. <laughs> I was like, I you enjoy all those motherfuckers all the time. You I asking me if I want Spectrum. I wear headphones, so I don't got to talk to them. I change my pathing inside of grocery stores. Me I too. Yeah. I change so I can, you know, can avoid walking past them. I wear headphones, so I'm not Man, listening. This I be nigga looking was at my like, phone. Hey, how you doing? What's AT&T going? guy. No, you cannot beat my freaking a- wireless coverage. Yo, this What's nigga. your wireless coverage? Free. Yo. Oh. This nigga really was like, yeah, who do you have? Who pays your electric bill? I'm like, well, I live with my parents, so I don't pay it. Yo, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. What's your Instagram? <laughs> nigga, I got to go. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I, I've n- never understood, like, because, like, I've never hit on a woman just, like, that I saw at the grocery store, just randomly just walked up to her, like, you know what? I don't know you. Hey, stranger. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you things about yourself and see if I can give you my number. Mm-hmm. It just seems Excuse weird to me. me. I don't know you. What's your name? Like, there's certain places I refuse to approach women. Like, I don't approach women in, at the gym because I assume that you're there to do gym things. Unless you're obviously there not to do gym things. Mm. Like, if I see you just kind of pacing around and you're not actually, is like, just go whole, down. The gym is such a hard place not to approach a woman. Mm. <laughs> but it, <laughs> I seem to agree. Uh, it's only funny because it's like, last time I was there, it's just like, there was a woman who literally moved from like oh down the thing, running like at that treadmill, walks over, goes to the treadmill directly in front of me. It's just like, what are you doing? And no, no, it's not that she just went to the treadmill in front of Charles. She let started the treadmill and then put her legs to both of the sides. You know how you let the treadmill go, yeah. but you need a break. She did that and then just bent over fully and like fiddled with her shoe for a good two minutes, just. 
<laughs> for two minutes straight, just bent over like that, just fiddling with her shoe. And I'm like, Charles. Who is she? What is she? Who is she doing this for? What is, what is, what is happening right here? This nigga Charles what doing is, any what, I'm what not really doing anything. I'm just sitting here, Charles. Day. Like, we just got our nice chest day done. It That's was a good workout. Hilarious. I'm actually still kind of sore from it today. <laughs> but we just sit, I'm just sitting here and I'm like, oh, Tony, I just kind of, I don't assume that any woman is trying to get my attention at any point in time. Charles, because but at that point, she it's is out. bent over. <laughs> Doing the full it. moon split Busting for your wide eyes. Open. Letting you know, hey, this would it look like from behind, so <laughs> if, if, you, if, if you was wondering what I look like bent over, <laughs> this is, it. Also, it's this like, is it. I don't know. As a person who has been told multiple times that I am a scary person to approach it first, which I completely and totally understand, Ash, you're going to say, no, I'm not scary. And there's a plethora of people who will also say I'm not scary. But there are also there are a plethora of people I think as they get along the shorter lines that find me completely and totally terrifying. Like she wasn't that went, short. No, she's actually she was actually legitimately tall. Yeah, so she's you would have been fine. Yeah, I'm, all I know but is I'm also, but I'm also I'm there for trying, me to work out. I was doing a different workout and I come up there and I'm doing. And I was like, you know what? I changed my mind. I'm gonna do this one with you. And I look over and it's like, what, Charles, what is going on? What in front the of you? fuck is happening over here? <laughs> uh huh. It's just okay. there. All right, sir, you're not going to speak to that, but all right. I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm not going to notice this, that this is happening to you, it's sir. It's not that it didn't notice. It's not that I don't notice all the time. It's just like, they be out here. <laughs> I like his it's, explanation. It's like, they be out here. <laughs> it's just like, I mean, we're going to a very nice gym here. now, and there, are, there tend to be like either well-to-do women or very attractive women. Mm. And oftentimes they're one and the same, but oftentimes... They are often not. So I don't approach women in the gym. Yes. Well, I do approach women in the gym to correct their workouts. But not but, just weird because it's not in like, yeah, I'm trying to talk to you type of way. It's no. just like, no, like this. Yeah, you're yeah. doing that wrong. Mm. I'm leaving. Why? Yeah, like I saw I'm an someone idiot. and she was doing it wrong. I was like, mm. and I just kept watching. I was like, this is really bothering me. I have to go say something. Like, why are you? It's just like, you just feel, no, no. I would do that if it was a man too. Yeah, but and then she, doesn't matter. I corrected her, and then she was doing the correction wrong. And I was like, all right, let me go over there and really demonstrate what I want her to do. Because what you're doing is not the right exercise. Mm. You're not going to get any of the... Because she was trying to hit her obliques and get her little love handles. And That's she was doing a little side bend, which is cool, but a twist is better for your obliques. So get this good horse squat twist going. And yeah. Oh. Uh-uh. Adventure, like the adventures of working out. I don't know why I asked you what it was like to what guys hit on you because I was just, I just was talking about that before earlier and I was like, that's so weird just to, I don't know, approach a woman just like the grocery store. Like, you here looking for sustenance. Yeah, it can happen anywhere. You're not looking for dick, I wouldn't assume. Oh, I'm not looking for much. Well, not you, things. just women in general. I don't think that they go it's to like, the grocery you're store out here, like, you're out, you're grabbing your granola, you're grabbing like your vegan. Yeah, and like, do I just stop you in the middle of the aisle? And then next thing you know, no, hey, yo, that. what you up to, girl? Like, like, where do I stop you at in the grocery store? Wherever you at, I don't fucking know. <laughs> like, you just be like, oh, damn. Uh-huh. Oh, so and they see you in the middle me... of the aisle and then start talking yeah. to you? Yeah. Hey, how so you doing? I just interrupt Might all start your with progress. That. Hey, how are you? And I then mean, if they want right. to, they There are ways of generally enter- entering into someone's thought process or inside of actual people's fears, just like, hey, oh, what? Oh, look, oh, I'm trying to get something that's in front of you, even though you're logically not trying to get anything that's behind them at all. Um... Is I don't know. I've been hit on everywhere. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> places. I mean, I've always operated that there's a legitimate understanding of there's like, I don't know, rules of engagement. And it's like, you know, the places that you don't is just like one when she's with when the, when she's with her children. Mm-hmm. Which yeah, that's kind of disrespectful. When she's obviously like when she's when they're at their job. So like waitresses, stuff like that. Leave, leave nah, them. I hit those on. Nah, I hit on those. I'm not gonna lie. No, this is a reason why I don't because they're out here. They're doing something that's this. This pretty much just like you're here to get sustenance because you're trying to buy money. You're trying to get money to then get food. No, nah, I'm here because I uh I saw you one day working here, and now I just come here every day to keep trying to talk to you until I get your number. That, that's how a guy operates. I saw this cute girl at the this one restaurant, so I'm gonna you know I'm gonna go back today. Hopefully All she's right. there. 
and then they just it's not the outlandish thing because exactly. i'm not gonna lie it's like I, I, there's a there are restaurants that i just go randomly fishing at like there's a chipotle over on transportation man he called it fishing that's what it is you out here fishing the huh? woman, he called it looking for women and called fishing. That's nigga, I was lost. Fishing. I'm like, why are you fishing at Chipotle? Yo, I was so uh, confused. So I'm like, I'm like, like well, it's like fishing <laughs> is pretty much p- putting myself out there and saying it's just like, all right, well, is she there? Nope. That girl never showed back up to that Chipotle again. Nigga. <laughs> I was upset. See, that's <laughs> why I look for the workers at like if I'm gonna go to a restaurant and like frequent it, it has oh, to no, be like it a, wasn't a even worker. that. She was a worker. It was just like, oh, you're cute. Didn't even really think about it. I was there with other people, kept it pushing, and it's just like, uh, but I'm also not gonna ask you for your number inside the middle of your shift. I did. I had a girl that worked at uh the speedway up the street, actually. Um and she would give me free Swishers and shit all the time. Like, I would buy a pack of pe- Swishers, a single pack. And she would hand me two packs consistently, every single time. The first time, I thought she did it on accident. The next 25 times, I recognized, oh, this is the pattern. you're doing something nice for me. All right, so let me engage more conversation. I got her number. She wouldn't respond. But would always just give me free shit at the store. And then I was the most confused nigga in the world. I was like, I don't understand what the situation is. You give me stuff. You flirt with me here. But when I text, you kind of respond. And then you go ghost. And they give me more free stuff. When you see me again, you're back to giving me free stuff and being flirty. Whatever. I don't understand what's happening. You're fine with the place. Uh, no, it's, place it's okay. Okay. <laughs> but I also would like to understand what is happening right now. What are you doing? Do you like me? Do you just find me attractive and want to be nice to me because you find me attractive? Or do you just want to be nice and give me free swishers? Why you are you flirting with me then? I don't necessarily, I don't know. I mean, what, my goodness, that was about to be a weird question. Just because it's just like, I don't know. I'm not inherently... Apparently, I flirt with some people and I don't flirt with others. And I, I, it's, I'm not like, I just be out here talking and having a good time. And I guess that's considered to be flirty. I don't necessarily consider it to be flirty. Well, she don't just be talking and having a good time. She'd be like leading the conversation to like hanging out and being alone and like real like flirty shit. Like shit that you can't really misconstrue. Like, like I said, at first, I thought I didn't, like I said, no idea what was going on. And she was being kind of vague. Then it got like much more clear, but then also like, hey, I'm not going to respond and (laughs) hang out with you. (laughs) I don't know what's going on. I'm confused and I don't want to engage in this anymore. I'm not going to come back here. That's the reason why you stopped going to Speedway? For a while, yeah, because I I don't know what we're doing. I'm confused. Are we fucking (laughs) or are we not? (laughs) Like At at this stage of the game, you, you give me good energy. I like that. I don't need to come to the gas station nearly as much as I do. But I'm coming because I want to see you. You seem like you want to see me, but also real either hesitant or not. Nah, well, I don't know. That's how she do. she gives everybody free swishers. That's how she keeps the revenue up. That doesn't make sense. That's how you lose revenue. <laughs> you can't give away. You buy one pack, get one free every single time. That's just no. It's the score. It's actually really the store policy. The price, the price is actually just different from what you thought it was. Nah, you, you've been buying double the swishers that you thought you were. She has the real question is she's never you given you any free swishers. Nah, <laughs> that would be crazy. You but no, nah. <laughs> we go to this diabolical class. Yeah. Story. No, it's not really diabolical. It's, <laughs> it's just diabolical like, in a small it's scale. It's ultimately like <laughs> this: the ultimate level of being misconstrued. Mm-hmm. It's like she's always been giving me free swishers. I've never given you free swishers. Oh. I gave you my number because nah. I gave you my number because you scared me. No, nah, she gave me free swishers because it made it apparent like she would like scurry me along when sometimes when she would give them and like her manager would be there. And I'd be like, I don't why are you risking your job? <laughs> like you could actively get fired for this is stealing. Because you're her little speedway like love tryst. That you gonna risk your job for? Yeah. If it's a tryst at your and job, you not it. hang out with out. 
Yes. Would you wish your job for a nigga that you had no desire to spend time with? People are weird. <laughs> like, I wouldn't wish five minutes for someone I'd rather spend time with. Yeah, like, I'm like, I don't understand. Uh, like, that makes sense. That's why I was so confused. Like, this is not how women very, operate. People make very odd decisions. I saw. <laughs> just like, so I would just continue letting, uh, I'd just be like, okay, well, I'll take the free swishers then. Can I get a Slurpee too? I used to get free milkshakes from um well Dunkin' Donuts. Mm. You know who isn't getting anything free though? Kanye mm. West. He probably they gets say, lots of things for free. No, nah, they say he's paying a million dollars a day to stay in the Mercedes uh stadium. I don't believe that he's paying a million dollars a day. Yeah, me neither. That's what, where's that's the Mercedes again. Stadium actually at? Atlanta. It's not like they're doing shit else in there. Right it's now. where the Falcons play. Yeah, it's not like they're doing anything else in there right now. And I think they have soccer games there. Do they have a MLS team in Atlanta? That w- I don't know anything about soccer. Let me be honest with you, but I heard they play soccer there. I mean, they play, you can play soccer in any football stadium. Do they have multiple football stadiums in Atlanta? No. I don't think so, so. Then it, well, technically, it, yes. They have the Atlanta Falcon Crafter Field, which is also technically a football stadium, but... Let me shut up before you throw something. Yeah, I'm gonna hit him in the head. Like, what's wrong with him? <laughs> it's just like, like who raised Charles? Have those... Charles come back to I the mean, show like he don't know how to do this. Technically, yes. Actually, <laughs> technically, I mean, every single high school has a football stadium, Tony. <laughs> it's like... What's going on with <laughs> <laughs> whose man's is this? Exactly. This man got to get out. <laughs> Technically, well, if you know, <laughs> if you don't talk about Kanye West, oh, what's happening with him? Kanye West, uh, West, uh, who brought him? This, you, this your man's right here. You I, this your ace in the fucking hole. You didn't care, man. <laughs> you brought him. Bring curly hair, Charles back. Oh uh, no, I like this one. This one in a, a like a teal. He looked really good in teal. Look, my man looking pretty sharp today. I like it. I don't care about the color he's wearing. I, I want do. his hair to go back nah. to being curly. Curly oh, hair Charles is this. nicer. I fuck with this oh, Charles. Oh, uh, you have to understand. It's I like my mental Charles. equity got chewed up by like quite a bit. And I normally have like a lot more bandwidth to deal with people. I'm thinking about taking a whole another week off of work just to actually build back up my overall mental bandwidth. Man. Because it's just like, Jesus Christ. You know who wears on your, <laughs> wears on your like, your good graces family. They be out here tap dancing on it. Yeah. But <laughs> in any of it, Kanye West, he's free out here producing this whole album inside the middle of Mercedes Mercedes Stadium or the Atlanta Falcons Friday, which the indoor stadium, I do believe, which doesn't make uh, in any of it. So, yeah, he's there. So wh- how wh- how are we supposed to talk about this? What, wh- what's the angle? Nigga. <laughs> This is the goofiest thing. Who who brought this this man? I'm confused. You confusing yourself. Who brought you? Oh my god. (laughs) Who drove you here? Because they need to come get you. What would you do if I just I knocked on the window and just said I drove him here? Hey. I'd fight you. (laughs) I want I like to fight anywhere, Charles, but no, what I wanted to talk about is how do you feel about picking different locations to like get into your creative bag? It depends upon the nature of like what you're doing. Like I can definitely tie music more so to different locations than I can. Uh, let's say art, but art is something that can also be, can also be created on location. Like if you get what I mean, like on paintings can only be done at certain times of day. And that painting will never be the same never be the same you'll never get the same painting again because different people will be there so it gets some results i don't know why this album needs to be produced inside of mercedes-benz stadium you don't get inspired by being in a different state what's it supposed to i get inspired from content because majority of the things i like to do is creative or stuff like that so it was like, I'll get inspired by different magic systems or a new spin on a story type or a new spin on a trope or something like that. But like, but yeah, you I'm never want to get into like your writing vibe inside of Wisconsin. No, let's say Mississippi. No, nah, no, nah, Mississippi's kind of crazy. Let's say, um, where's a good place that a black person can go? 
That's, Arkansas, uh, since we just no, name it random that's ass. That's not typical. <laughs> I know. That's why I was weird. You said this is I was trying to think something off the beaten trail. But hey, Charles, remember like, this nigga said long sleeve pants? I <laughs> call <laughs> <laughs> This kind of reminds me. <laughs> can suck dick. Because uh, Riley had them on her that? arms today like this. Hey, she had a lot of safe pants she on had this. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Oh, I think you underestimated the energy of having me and Ash inside the same room. <laughs> All I know is, what was the question I asked you? Nigga, I don't know. Arkansas? Well, oh, it, our entire thing was about Where can you go? <laughs> South not Dakota. Fit. Oh, you go to New Mexico. I ain't never heard niggas really just going to New Mexico to just. New Mexico oh. might be a vibe. Might be a nice little like catch a cool area. Good Arizona desert. was pretty cool. Oh yeah, or Arizona. Let's say like you wouldn't want to do that and just go there, there to a, like go. I program. have a very limited of states that I actually want to vi- visit. I'm not one of those types of person who wants to show up at every single state. Washington. New York. Well, what about going to Washington? You wouldn't want to go to like Seattle and just go like sit in like a. Uh, Airbnb Why? and program and like the oh, rainy no, I season. Can program at home. I w- if I would do it, I would do some type of creative writing thing. So yeah, I'll you swear. can go right there. Like honestly, programming in any place that's not set up for me to do it is completely and totally cumbersome. And no, I would no. never do in it. this situation, you would be like Kanye, where no matter where you're at, this setup is completely what you need it to be. I mean, but you can produce everything that you need on a MacBook Air nowadays. Yeah. I, don't th- I doubt he has like his full setup there unless you got like a whole like what's his setup looking like does he have like a full 48 channel mixer just kind of there he might have just been like weirdly obsessed with like the acoustics or maybe how that stadium made him feel at the time you never really yeah. know because i remember when solange performed at the opera house in australia and i can get with that i can get with different places inspiring you wow. because you don't really know what those feelings can evoke or like when I went to New York and then I went back and I wrote about it <clears throat> I don't think I wrote while I was there but just feeling that feeling of being in that state and never having to be in there inspired me to write about it I do I have to do that to be creative no but now I'm seeing that travel is an essential part of my being so I'm gonna be traveling and I'm gonna be writing so if them two things just so can happen it's because of some parts of me that's just what who and what I am but I totally understand of, of a space really like like when you go inside the Cleveland um the Cleveland Art Museum there's a big ass one they paint probably about this size and then it looks out into like the atrium I guess and I think they it show you like the front lawn just that whole space yeah I know what you're talking about yeah that shit inspired me like I just wanted to sit there and just stare at it like at that moment I'm like damn I wish I was a photographer just to catch that moment like how do you catch a moment like that like I would like if I could live in an art museum I probably would that's the coolest thing to me yeah, I would definitely go to destinations or different places to like get my creative bag. It's just it's not a prerequisite for me. I can go most places and I can I don't know. My imagination is so wild to the point where I can pretty much imagine being in I mean, today. I guess you saying a prerequisite means like it's something that we would have to do. That's not what we're saying. We're saying that it's something that would be nice and like a nice addition. I don't, it's not anything that I would need to do. Like I do all my creativity here, but I can recognize that new energy, new spaces, new places, create yeah. new flows of energy to yourself. I just found out, like I just watched the whole backstory to Supreme and how they got to where they are. And then I ordered, it was actually a rip off of this artist called, artist called Barbara Kruger. And I ordered from the library all, well, not all of her art books, but almost all of them goddamn art books. And stuff like that could start small. And you never know what a city or a different space could do to you in those moments where it just sets something off. And you'd be like, damn, I need to go discover this. And it's not that I'm looking for these moments. They just happen. (laughs) So, like, being in a different space could really inspire you to be like, well, what does this artist from this area? Like, you could look at a body of work from, like, New York people and just wonder how they all kind of got on the same wavelength. But that could be a different wavelength than somebody in Arizona. Like, you you being inspired by the desert is way different than you being inspired by the subway. It got to be, because those those could be two different wild arts. So, like, me seeing that stuff is hella inspiring. 
because now like looking at her artwork now i really got into like the space of just like well what how can i express myself through art now because i'm looking into that like i wonder what i can learn how to do on my own to find another avenue to express myself <clears throat> so it could lead for those of different things so you just never know but i don't have to go nowhere it's nice to do it though like looking at the lake in Port Clinton did something different to me than looking at the lake when I was here. <laughs> oh yeah, like there was this really stormy day in Seattle and it rains a lot, but it doesn't necessarily get the most stormy. But it was super windy and they have this dog park that is on Mercer Island that is in between Seattle and Bellevue um, inside of the Puget Sound. And so it, it's it's I, obviously, the island dog, dog park sits right on the water. And it was just a stormy, really cloudy day, and it was raining. And I just stood out there and was just, like, really inspired and just, like, probably one of my favorite, like, memories and scenes from being out there. And, like, I could never recreate that, but it was just a very inspiring thing. And so if I could find that, like, inside of a structure and be like, you know what, I'm going to live here for a year, I might do that. Or for however long I want to, to, like, tap into this creative energy and like utilize it yeah because think about how much creativity went to make in the stadium like even just from the engineers i don't know like think about like this seating going up like this must do something to sound or whatever the fuck that's on a whole different level to even think about like somebody really thought about that the mathematics of making this a certain way for something to sound a certain way i can see why kanye would want to do that Charles like, no, nah, I want to go home. Oh, no. Uh, Smally th- critique of Kanye in that is like, stadium acoustics are terrible. I wouldn't that shit. I wouldn't know. What if he found a way to improve upon it? You just never know. What if that's the reason why? Because it's terrible. <laughs> at that point, but at that point, if you're building this, if you're building this album to pretty much be produced inside of the studio and it sounds correct inside of the studio, mm-hmm. that means like when you re- remove it from that studio, you're never going to get it's not like you're taking that sound and you're going to be able to produce it out. Al- you're not going to be able to produce an album that takes that sound with you. Yeah. So it's just like, for inspiration wise, yeah. Like to go back to my literary equation thing, I just don't think I get the same amount of growth from that. Yeah. The majority of my creativity is just my headspace has to be inside the direct space. And like, I've been a decent amount of places and I lived probably more places than some because like i've been to north carolina florida hawaii i've seen all these like real scenic vistas and stuff like that i would rather just sit there and just enjoy the vista yeah i'm I'm not not trying to when i get inspired i'm not trying to like i gotta write this pen and paper down like going to myrtle beach looking at all that architecture just driving up down ocean boulevard Cause it was it so fucking lit to me. And I just would go and drive, like, when I had to go get something to eat, I would just drive up it because like, I just loved looking at all that shit going on there. But that didn't necessarily make me want to pull out a pen and paper. No, that's not what I'm doing. I mean, it in. doesn't see Because for me, inspiration inspires to I want to do work. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to go directly into doing work. It's never, I really want to bre- It's always like an aha type movie. It's Eureka as opposed to... This is just an environment that I exist in. Yeah. It's it's like lightning in a bottle for the most part. So I know that at no point in time will I ever be able to, like, it's not really tied to any environment. It's not tied to anything in particular. It's just always innocuous. Walk on the law, blah, 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 blah. Oh, idea. Right. So... Yeah, I don't know. I just don't derive anything from locations the same way that other people do. I can see that. But still, like, even if I'm trying to, like, just for a metaphor, just like, oh, something fast paced. Now I can have New York to kind of use that as a metaphor if I was just writing a poem or whatever. So I can see, like, like I said, my intent is to not go to these places and be like, I'm going to write about this. But when the time do be right to kind of capture a feeling. I mean, it just gives you a frame of reference for a feeling in which that you're trying to evoke inside of your writing. Like yeah. this claustrophobic feeling of people kind of always being there, the hustle, the bustle, and right. it's something that you can't necessarily understand unless you've been there. 
or yeah, or for just to feel like <clears throat> you know that <clears throat> you know that um that cemetery on Mayfield. Yeah. So I go there pretty often, and I love going there when it's raining. Like a not a stormy rain, like a because it's like a park when you walk down in the cemetery. There's like a little tiny nature thing. It's so fucking pretty, and I just go there when it's raining. When I feel like going on the east side, just for the fuck of it. You know why? Because it feels it feels like a weirdo wonderland that only I know about. (laughs) No one can come across this fucking bridge. I'm the princess of this bridge. Get out of here, you heathen. Those little spaces that I go. Too. And it's not necessarily to get inspired by anything. It just brings me peace. I don't know if I wrote there, but I definitely like drawing on those little spaces to help me hmm. kind of get a little bit more centered. Like music does that more so for, for what you guys are talking about, more so for me than anything else. Yeah. Music does that as well, but I also won't say that a place doesn't inspire some level of like creativity out of me. But yeah, no, I, I don't think there's a, a bad thing if you're not inspired by places, really. Mm, it's just I derive mine from other things. Yeah. Oh, uh, like, but I also tie music of it, music albums to, like, critical events inside of my life. Like, this Vince Staple album will probably forever be prescribed to this is the album that happened during this entire debacle. And that's where I got a good portion of my piece from because that's a peaceful-ass album. You can sit there and you can put it on and it feels no matter where I'm listening to it at, it feels like I'm sitting back inside of a hammock. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like it's swinging back and forth. Yeah, I can't listen to the whole album at the gym. I listen to mm-hmm at the gym. That's about it. <laughs> it's just like, what you about to do? Mm, I'm about to take this nap for real. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a great album. I'm mad that it's not longer. <sighs> Give me like two more songs. I need 10 more minutes. Let me be honest, 10 more minutes. And I know I'm not going to get no goddamn, like, I'm not going to get the deluxe edition because it probably doesn't exist. Yeah, I'm very disappointed. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> very disappointed. It's like, I imagine someone walking up to him and saying, Vince, when are we going to get the deluxe edition? I feel like all his that fans was the deluxe should edition. just tweet him and be like, please, sir, may we have some more <laughs> music? Some more. <laughs> just, just 10 just minutes tidbit, more. Please. Just a crumb. The crumb of tracks. Yeah. That, like, just two more tracks. <laughs> <laughs> Please, sir. Uh, but, I, but I guess since you get a lot of inspiration from content, we can move into Ash's topic. Yeah, my fucking topic. Do you think there's what? too much content in the world? In I the USA? I think there's just enough content for... There might be overpopulation in certain areas, but in general, there's just something for everyone now. But also, I think a lot of stuff is creeping through the, uh, is making it along that probably wouldn't. Like, uh, like a lot of these, just a lot of these series that probably wouldn't make it through the cutting room floor. It's just like, yo, you're just green lighting stuff because you guys need more. Because, like, a lot of these apps have to vindicate their existence. Mm-hmm. A la HBO or, like, Hulu, like... Hulu, Netflix, all these things. Now that you have se- separate streaming platforms for everything, well, now you all need original content. It's like Netflix is inside the fight for his life to vindicate his existence because pretty much ever all the thing, all the content that he used to count on that he used to actually get, now it's dispersed over other things because they need it for their own content platforms. And it's just like, well, then you have stuff that making making stuff like Jupiter's Legacy or just things that like just green lighting stuff and canceling things and getting rid of stuff and never letting them actually travel or like see themselves through or anything like that. It's just like, nah, we got to hit like lightning in a bottle. We got to keep catching it and so on and so forth. So, I mean, in a way, yes, but in a way, no, because now there's content for everybody, but I think we're starting to expand time past the event horizon of like only so many, there's a, there's only such a array of these things that are actually going to be able to get the attention and the ability to like to actually sustain themselves. Because like it depends upon the reason why you're creating the content. Like, are you creating it because it fills yourself, or are you or are you creating it to make money? Most people create content to make money eventually. 
Um, I think that a lot of the content has diluted the art. Most of, well, I don't know if that's fair. Because sometimes, nah, nah, fuck it. I'm standing on that. All this content is diluted the art because some people aren't artists. They don't care about like the craft or like cinematography or like audio engineering or any like musical composition or like what it means to like tell a good story or like the beats that like you should be hitting. They're just like, all right, mm-hmm. I can throw something out that's going to stream and give me a quick buck. And this is the new way to like get another source of income. So I think it's invited a lot of people that do that. Not not to say that everyone's doing that, but I do think that there's a lot of people that do engage in that. So they're doing it and they're kind of creatively bankrupt while doing it. Yeah, they're just like, I'm not doing this because this is uh, something I want to create. I'm doing this because I believe it'll be. It's like, uh, God, I forgot. Not symptomatic. It is uh, algorithmic. There we go. It's like this plus this plus this will get hit. Kind of like how they were, how like the big companies in music used to create music. It's just like, this is what's hot. This is what you need to make. And if it's not this, like Motown, Mm -hmm. this plus this plus this equals hit. It's just like, but you all look the same and it stopped eventually producing hits because everybody pretty much did the same thing. And then they just kind of ditch it. Yeah, no, there's way too much bullshit out here because, like you were saying, like, now it's just the content machine. And Martin Scorsese said something that I'm going to quote here, what he said about cinema, which is pretty cool. Cinema has been systematically devalued, sidelined, demeaned, and reduced to this lowest common denominator, content. Content has now just become this junk food binge-watching thing. Now, like, now they call it binge-watching, so I don't think that's, like, a mistake that you can just have all this stuff in your fucking face. And I guess I brought that up today because that should lightweight be for me. Like I know Tony has, he got current events to talk about. It's always going to be a current event. Me, I don't have a really a current event to go off of. Not saying that I don't have to do that, but coming up with ideas as, and then coming up with ideas that I really want to talk about be so difficult and the fact that people just keep turning it out like it don't really mean much to them is kind of alarming because like you said now the art is being taken away from it now you don't really have anything to say it's just oh (laughs) it's just stuff i can't i don't know i'm not particularly the biggest fan of scorsese because And a lot of, I don't like a lot of the people who are snobby about the things that they create. That's it. Like, because the fun of, like, yes, these are art, but what is art meant to do? They're to a certain degree, some art is meant to evoke feeling and stuff like that. And some things are meant to entertain. Mm -hmm. Not everything has to be this wildly highbrow thing in order for it to actually, for for its existence to be vindicated. And it's just like, because Scorsese is pretty much on to thing. It's just like, ah, oh, these Marvel movies are moving, cin- they're ruining cinematography. Like, well, I mean, we're just here to have some fun, dude. Just let it go. His thing that it wasn't cinema, but it's not, though. To me, I agree with him that these Marvel movies are just big comic books brought to life. I think, even though. <laughs> I mean, what is cinema? Cinema to me would have to have like some sort of art form, things coming together, not just like Ant Man, was just people shooting at each other and bang banging, and like they just keep pushing the movies out, no matter how weird or wacky the storyline could be. I ain't seen Endgame for real, and I stopped watching those movies because I get really tired of just watching motherfuckers on fucking screen blowing shit up. Like that's never been me for real, for real. But I guess what I would say, cinematography is is like a much greater use of like camera angle and like really getting into your like director bag in terms of like telling the story through the visual medium 
with like all forms and not just like you sing and speaking, but like the subtle shifts in like a person, like just shit like that, that you're not really getting from. Or creating the Marvel. mood. Yeah. Like how a specific lighting can help you create a mood to help you understand a character. They not really doing that in Marvel movies It's pretty straightforward. What they are trying to do. They trying to recreate a comic book. And coming from his story where he literally have to come from, you have to have a good cinematographer. You have to have a good writer. You have to have all these things coming together to make, to tell his story. And not saying that there's not good cinematographers out there doing that in Marvel, but it just don't seem like they focus is on really trying to get to the heart of a story for real. Like I said, I ain't seen Endgame and that just seemed to be everybody's kind of favorite part of that. I don't see a lot of people saying like, no, that shit was stupid. It was trash. So I guess they must have done something right. But it's not really driving a point home of like where like for me, storytelling is the basis of all creativity, no matter if you're a singer, a songwriter, an artist, or a painter. And I'm pretty sure Stanley had the intention of coming in and tell a story, but these movies and don't really feel like they come from the heart. It just seemed like we found something to make money off of. Yeah, I would say the comics are definitely art, but I would say the movies that came from the comics don't qualify as the same thing. Not really. I would say that Disney doesn't treat them that way. And that's probably where the biggest thing goes. Is Disney's not looking for that. It's not looking to create a cinematography masterpiece. Yeah, because can you say Joker is the same as the Marvel movies? <laughs> <laughs> but you just, I'm sorry. do you understand no, what I'm trying to say? I understand what you're trying to say, but I also understand you kind of broke Tony on that. It wasn't me that was the issue. He's the issue because he loves that movie. I know, but y'all can't say like they was trying to do the same thing. Y'all oh, well, get what I mean, I'm trying to say. I ultimately don't Whatever your that, personal opinion about it is, I'll it's say hilarious. that Dancy Clown Man was not trying to do the same Fuck thing. Fuck Dark Clown. <laughs> but dark if clown. we want to talk about the Dark Knight um, Joker and the second one, I think even that was more nuanced than... Right, because he was getting. trying to... He went through a whole trilogy to tell the hero's journey, basically. And I agree that maybe the original artist that went into it doing that. But what we got now is just something that they probably are trying to tell a story, but I can see where Scorsese coming from, where he had to be in that realm and he had to earn his respect in gathering all these people together. And it's not saying that these people don't. Like, I get what you're saying, like being snobbish about it. Um, being snobbish about it, you don't agree with, but I would agree with that. Like, how could you go from this and then just turning out these movies like the way they're doing i mean it happens <clears throat> with every medium mm -hmm. like it happened with music how do we get the mozart to like fruity loops mm -hmm. like it's it used to be everyone used to have a fundamental level of composition and understanding and chords chord progressions stuff like that staccato all the italian terms that you would need to actually to actually convey these things and now people don't just don't But it no one seems to have the same level of problem with that as they do with movies. Or maybe it's just a lot more so of the coming home is happening because cinematography as an art form is way younger than music. So people have always been able to have that level of nuance with music because there's like, all right, no one thinks that this ballad is the same thing that this random dude, this musician is singing in the tavern. They're not the same thing. And everyone knows they're not really meant to be the same thing. One is meant to, you're just meant to have a little bit of fun and have and kind of party too. The other one is meant to be sit, sat and reflected and things like, like that. But no one differentiates and calls one music or one not music. Mm -hmm. That's more so what I'm saying. I'm saying they're both cinematography is just the Marvel movies aren't meant to be analyzed in that level. But I think a lot of directors and a lot of people who are more along the art side of that field are kind of upset because there's also a difference of that's where the money's going. Mm -hmm. So there are actively pictures that aren't getting greenlit because it's just like, because Marvel movies set the curve. So it's just like, yo, like, what are you doing? Well, is that going to make me $300 million? Is that where the bar has to start? 
I mean, Iron Man 1 made $300 million. It's just like all damn well. It's more so they kind of wrecked the curb for like film, like how much a film is supposed to come in. So means it, I can see it kind of messing up inside the, the film department in that because everyone wants the Marvel money, but not everybody can get it because not everybody's produced that money making machine quite. So, like, I can understand a certain degree of the as, uh, exasperation with that, but, like, I don't know. Like, but also looking at Corsese, I love gangster movies, but I don't, uh, he's never traveled outside of that realm. So it's just like, I don't know. I mean, is your skill set, su- like, and that's the funny thing, is this, like, what's the other thing that makes you, like, if you're a cinematographer and you're a director, should you be able to direct every single type of movie under the sun or should you stick, stick to your particular sphere? I don't know. It's like, that depends on the person. Like you're saying, like venturing out to try to challenge yourself could be completely up to that creative person's endeavor. But I mean, I guess it's one of those things where it's just like nowadays inside of music, I don't expect people to be genre, genre diverse because they kind of like are creating inside of their particular sphere and I don't expect them to travel outside of that Mm -hmm. but well inside of cinematography when you say it's just like oh I understand all this stuff this is what this is what I get and this is what people used to have to do so that means you can literally direct anything well no so that means like your your understanding is limited too Mm -hmm. So so everything you're saying that you had to understand you didn't have to understand everything but you can't apply these things inside of all scenarios so it's just like so like even though Corsese kind of critiques other people because like even though people love the Corsese movies there was a period of time when people didn't really consider gangster movies like that same thing mm-hmm. but he's the kind of the person who kind of normalized that but for a while it just wasn't they weren't taken seriously so it's like I mean I guess Sometimes when evolution happens, it don't mean it's always going to be great. And just like you was using with the music and the Mozart thing. I know a lot of, I want to say a lot of musicians. I know Johnny Cash was quoted on saying, well, how do you feel about using like Pro Tools and shit? He's like, well, it made recording easier. But that's just the evolution of how we create in things. This evolution of creating content wherever we are in this space is even just creating a $300 million movie, we've created a precedence to create $300 million movies all the fucking time. And then lower, not lower movies, but something that wants to tell a different niche. kind of story. I wouldn't even say niche because growing up with me in movies, Titanic was one of the, was the highest grossing movie at one time. But I wouldn't say that set the standard for how other people was telling stories. Like, yeah, you hope your movie would go that way, but guess what I'm trying to say is, okay, like uh, Charlize Theron is doing the Fast whatever the fuck series. Yeah, because now, like, I don't know if actors are finding a problem with, like, doing something different. Like, I know Matt Damon is considered a really great actor, but I hadn't heard a movie from him in a while. And then when I went to go check the movies, Tom, the other day, he had a whole ass movie out. In 1995 or whenever the fuck he came out, that would have been a huge deal. But it's not considered a huge deal now because he's not in one of these big, spectacular <laughs> CGI fucking... Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, we, I don't hear from these actors no more. And I know it's a different genre, like a different... Uh, what are I'm looking for? I don't know why I can't remember what Matt... Oh, no, Matt Damon. Uh, but you see what Lawrence I'm saying? Like, those, actors, those actors that I grew up with, that my generation of actors are not you you don't hear about the smaller shit anymore like you could hear about some smaller things depending on the actor like oh he did this movie this came out you don't hear that shit no more unless they in something crazy but i'm also gonna say truly inspired work or things true like when someone makes something that they love the love comes through and generally it's oftentimes kind of feel like it's success because like films are i mean the entire film industry as far as i understand is completely and totally vapid it's just like you you don't win an oscar based off of your uh yo you'll win best picture based off of the movie you've been it based off your like studio campaigning for you to win that thing it's not yeah it's not based off of that so it's just like 
I don't know, a lot of the artistry, the artistry inside of it, the industry, when your primary governing entity or your primary judging entity is completely and totally like purchasable like that, I think the artistry has probably gone out of the window mm-hmm. quite a bit earlier. Like the example I was going to end up giving for like the movies that were just made for the love of making the movie, like John Wick is technically an example of that. Goofy, so funny as hell, dumb as hell. But it was pretty much something that Keanu Reeves made because it's like, oh, I wanted to make kind of like an old school action movie. Right. With isometric camera thing. Mm-hmm. Isometric cameras with no shaky camera or anything like that. That means you have a continuous shot of the entire thing. So that means you have to do the whole thing like Jackie Chan used to do or like like the old action dudes used yeah, to do. Yeah, Daredevil did day. that. Those singer, those singer like run through shots. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like the person actually had to be skilled. Mm-hmm. And so the actor had to be physically fit in order to do that. But I feel like that's an art. That's him saying, I want to get into my artist bag. But like the love shown through, what I was saying more so is the love shown through. And now it's a continually going series because. <laughs> but like, you didn't get that with Marvel. There's no like. I, there, I think FX there was a lot artist. of love. I think there was a lot of love in Iron Man. The first yeah, one. the first Iron Man we can honestly or Blade. Blade is one of my favorite fucking movies ever. There like, was literal. I'm trying to create this story and big it, bring it to oh the no, big I screen. I think when Disney stepped in and turned it into like a what like, it is now. Yeah, like I think there was some love inside First <sighs> Avenger. I mean, it was. I think there's. <sighs> It's not even to my say my entire opinion is so screwed inside of this because I have such a visceral and emotional connection to all of the stories at hand because I read them and then yeah. I watched them. So it's like I'm willing to accept that that like my opinion can be skewed of this, but it's just like and even Deadpool, like I can see how you could consider his comment a little snobbish because that's the value in like if a FX person get to that point where he can work on a Marvel movie, that's a big fucking step for him. There's nothing that he didn't try and practice at and develop his skill in that one. But I do agree, like as far as like a storytelling goes and really feeling like I really want to put this to screen and really tell a really powerful story. It's not to say that those things don't tell powerful stories. But you can damn sure see what they're caring about in these things, like big action sequences, CGI, like how much can you wow an audience in this short amount of time um, or the amount of time that we have here? What's going to make sure they come back? Like I said, I love the fact that that type of culture that we grew up in, that we weren't really necessarily looked like upon for for being the coolest people in the world. It's not the coolest thing in the fucking world. I would never take that feet away from nobody. But also, I just kind of agree, like, even with YouTube content re- uh, creation, I've noticed now that YouTube, uh, the content creators have started using, like, if not their whole real name, something close to their real name. And I'm like, what? where's the separation there? Because now your whole house has become an ad. Everything you pick up has now somehow become to, I wonder if I'm going to get this sponsorship. I wonder who's going to show me this. I'm styling my whole house to make sure that I'm bringing viewers in and it's like well i thought you were supposed to create a persona if you're using your whole ass real name i mean you've become you like, there's somehow a lot become, of things that i don't like in youtube like mm-hmm. vlogging it's just like well it's like well if your entire content is a vlog channel that's basically you telling me this is what i'm doing today yeah this is what i did today very <laughs> little editing one, two, and three. Put them right next to each other. Art starts. <laughs> but you go. see how your whole like your whole apartment could become an ad now. I mean, their goal is for the most of the time their goal is for the entire department to become an ad. Yeah, but we don't see it. It's just like, like look at my IKEA furniture. My coat here's my code to get 15% off all IKEA orders. Mm-hmm. This, that, and the other. So this person sent me this, this person sent me that, so on and so forth. They're not a sponsor anymore. So it means they don't get no plug. Get the fuck out of here. It's wild now. That episode of Black Mirror actually showed that shit where he was the one where they on the treadmill and they had to go up to that competition. Oh, I'm sorry. Whenever someone says Black Mirror, it just reminds me Open Mike Eagle's divorce happened, basically. <laughs> it was triggered because of a Black Mirror episode. What? Yeah, that uh and, uh anime inside of anime trauma and divorce 
that he literally just made an entire song is just like and he was just completely and totally vexed it's just like how did this stop how how did we end here off of a black mirror episode a black mirror episode triggered the conversation that triggered his divorce no, y'all wanted to leave. That's what happened. <laughs> it was just like, just you, were here, you were just looking for I don't this. want to be here in Tima. I want to go home. <laughs> home like, well, is where well, I want to be. Well, this is your home. We're watching a Black Beer episode on Netflix at home. <laughs> like, where do you want to go? I don't know. Well, I'm going I'm to retain custody of my child. Yeah. But anyway, back to the next Black Mirror thing. <laughs> I would, in that episode, they were showing like how his pain somehow became the next biggest thing. And now this nigga just living in like a bigger prison box and his girlfriend was just getting fucked on camera. It was like, oh, I see now. Like he was like his whole spiel got him a bigger, a bigger jail. So to be honest with you. And now you could just just kind of see that like, um, like just with like, I'm not. Well. I watch YouTube as much as the next person, I guess. But now you can kind of see where this is going. like, Or just like the concept of crying in front of a camera is so fucking strange to me. <laughs> Who cries in front of cameras? Plenty of motherfuckers. Like just, I'm not saying they're doing it to get clout, but like let's say you're on live and I'm trying to be vulnerable in front of a whole bunch of people. Like that's so weird because when I want to cry, I don't want no one to see me cry. Absolutely fucking not. I don't give a fuck who you are. You don't get to see me cry. <laughs> what? Advertising this weakness. Yeah. And then how the next day, like, oh, it could just beat up and then they can just believe in whatever you put out. Yeah, this is, oh my gosh, she's so real and authentic. But how real and authentic is she? <laughs> or he, for that matter. Hmm. And for you to just keep constantly consuming that shit and just not stopping sometimes. I don't know, man. I don't know. I I think there's a lot of content out there that is just strictly chasing a dollar. Creatively bankrupt. I know a lot of rappers that are just like, yeah, I don't care about music. I'm just here because I know I can make a buck. Yeah. So for me, it's like, Sure, sometimes both can be true, but more often than not, it's one or the other. Either you're doing this for the artistry and then you happen to like <clears throat> become financially like successful, but you're really like in love with it like a prince. Yeah. I wouldn't be doing anything else regardless of whether or not I could afford all these instruments or not. I'll be out here being weird in Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, what do you, <clears throat> I, I just so happy to work out. <laughs> yeah. So something like that to me. Whereas you got like, I don't, who's an example of an artist that was just purely in it for, for the money and not the artistry. For some reason. Probably Tekka, Lil Tekka. Lil Tekka. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why. I only think of Tyga. No, it's T E C C A. And uh, who's a. I'm starting to think of somebody who's probably fairly major that doesn't really care about the quality of anything that they actually ever released. Lil Tech is huge. I've never heard of him. Um, He's huge with the younger demographic. He's not targeted at you at all. Oh. Yeah. Who is like, a person that's never really cared about any of this? They just be out there throwing it out, not caring. I can't think of nobody. Maybe we just don't exist on a wavelength where we would actually watch anyone or consume anything that uh. That's that like would... older act. Um, <clears throat> what about think. Millie Vanilli? That's the one that just made me think about that shit. Where well, them niggas literally just had the sound recordings. That's somebody you have right there. I'm just thinking off the top of my head. I know it has nothing to do with our generation, but just thinking about that off the top of my head. Mm. Like, don't know. What is the entity? It has not seemed like they cared about what they've done for God knows how long. I can't think of nobody. Uh, I would say ACDC. Like, as of right now. Like, when they released Black Ice. Yeah. It was like, why'd y'all do this? Yo, them niggas just won't stop with it. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> I just need this money. Who? 
<laughs> this nigga is that nigga still not performing with a shirt on the main guitar <laughs> fucking yo every time he get on stage he got that one fucking move where he just bite it up <laughs> I'm glad we could talk about this, Charles. This really makes me feel closer to you as a human. <laughs> oh, it's like watching the Rolex Rolex Stones. It's like, yo. Them niggas won't quit, and I hate they drummer. That nigga don't be doing shit. Charles, let me know the favorite fucking Rolling Stones drum pattern. Yeah, let me know. You can't think of you know why? Because it's the simplest shit in the fucking world. It always probably is just gonna be painted black, but that's <sighs> probably the that's probably that's the, the most, most technical. That's partly because he needs to put that cowbell in there. I got a fever, and the only prescription is oh, one well, cowbell. I, know. I have a whole list. Who? <clears throat> Them franchise boys, um, that whole Laffy Taffy wave, and oh. the ringtone rappers. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Like, two I had to go through my phone and start looking. I was like, you know, no, no. like, that's an interesting challenge that I can't think of off the top of my yeah, head. Yeah, it's like, oh, all right, bet. Let me let me do this. And then I didn't find anyone on my phone. And I got mad, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then I was like, Titty Boy, the South. <laughs> and then I thought about Jeezy, and I was like, nah, Gucci, no. And I was like, oh. That Laffy Taffy shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, because then after that, it was all the dances, because it was like that dance there, but not like how it is now. But it was the bird the walk with what? Um, it was them uh, franchise boys. It was um, partying like a rock star, all that shit that was. Partying like a rock star had a dance. Did yeah. it? I believe so. But yeah, all that shit was uh, totally new. That ringtone rapper, <laughs> motherfuckers were getting signed to make ringtones, and that was the biggest thing because motherfuckers finally had cell phones, was buying hella ringtones. Wow. Yeah, you were, they were artists were getting million dollar deals off of ringtones. Hmm. Well, shit. because you didn't, because you couldn't always get the uh, ringtone on every single service. I mean, it's just like it was a, it was, there was a certain degree of exclusivity. It's just like, oh, they got laffy taffy on T Mobile. Fuck Verizon, man. You about to literally void your entire contract to get a ringtone? Yeah, man, everybody wanted the ringtones back in the day. Needed your Laffy Tappy. <laughs> like, for a point in time, you could actually cut your ringtones on iTunes. And you could actually just do whatever custom one when you want it. I made, no more. Le- I made a legitimate mm-hmm. small amount of money doing that to people and just selling them ringtones that I made. That's the thing that you can do because you could always fit micro SD cards inside of your. All of my phones always could fit micro SD cards. No, it's a shitty content. I saw the GI Joe movie Saturday. Oh, why did you do that to yourself? I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I do know because I had a crush on the dude that plays Snake Eyes. Oh. So I was like, hmm, let me see this. What Snake Eyes getting his own movies? This nigga talked through the whole thing. <laughs> You're not supposed to talk, Snake Eyes. Is this prior to your larynx being ripped out? And the camera was so shaky. shaky. Like, I really thought I had issues. Like, I know I wear glasses. <laughs> I'd never seen anything like that. We couldn't see the fight scenes. And then, like, when we got in, he was like, yeah, prepare yourself for the intensity of what is going to be Snake Eyes. I'm like, you didn't fight. <laughs> they didn't fight in there, Charles. He did not show his technical ability at all. I'm really mad at this movie because I had to convince somebody, we're going to see Snake Eyes. He was like, all right, babe, we're going to see Snake Eyes. I'm fucking pumped to go see it. That was a shit fest from the whole, they used the ninja smoke bomb in the dumbest way possible. Oh, my God. To not blind people? It's like he, you remember in, um... Fantastic Four when Doom came back and all of a sudden he would just look at somebody and they would disintegrate. It was like that with the little sunstone thing. They tried to put magic in this bitch. It was so fucked up. Now you need magic. They would randomly put it in there. Like it wasn't like it was a cool, like little philosophical little ninja story. And then magic out of nowhere followed this life. I'm like, it has to be magic. Ninja magic. No. No, Look, no, 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 Naruto no. Naruto was just a part of the Olympics. We need ninja magic. Even though it should have just been... A, I mean, 
the scary thing about Snake Eyes is that they already taught you how to make a Snake Eyes movie. It's called Ninja Assassin. See, now you see how the action in there, like, I didn't like Ninja Assassin, but the action in there (laughs) redeemed it. Because it was like an old Shinobi movie. They were using the purposeful, like... There's nothing redeemable about Red blood splatter, stuff like that. It's just like, what's so special? Like, so what's happening? Oh, no conversations? No conversations. We just murdered (laughs) Which was redeemable quality about Ninja Assassin. I don't know none of that fucking storyline, but don't give a fuck. <laughs> what was fucked it? up in there. Exactly. Uh, what was it? It's, it's hey, literally hey, saying she and the legend. I like too. Ninja Assassin. That's I my movie. It. Yo, I enjoyed I Ninja Assassin. It. I own that on PlayStation. But what the fuck was the storyline? So I don't remember. I oh, he's about to get it. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, let me, don't let me give you. Ninja Assassin. I don't remember what the fuck was in there. Classic but movie. I can put boy, that on and enjoy myself. Boy and girl. Lo- uh, trying to escape together. Girl gets killed. Boy eventually leaves. That's not true. <laughs> he wrong. <laughs> what? Girl escapes. Boy gets punished for not being ninja enough. And no, because he great ninja and they got expectations for him. Girl helps boy cope with everything. Girl is like, this is some bullshit. Let's leave. Boy is like, nah, I'm gonna stay. Girl leaves and gets caught. Girl killed. Then they kill girl. Mm-hmm. Boy stays, becomes ninja, leaves. Leaves after scarring the master, and then it disappears, and then comes back and rescues another girl that starts to investigate the ninjas. Yeah. Bruh, don't remember none of that shit. I yeah, remember nah, that black man, baby. Oh, I mean, that's the whole plot. That's my shit. Yeah, <laughs> giant. Vit, he just goes through, and you just get, end up with ninja fight scenes, people popping up from shadows. These niggas don't even start as kids in the thing, how they grew up together. Well, oh, Snake Eyes and... Uh, yeah, Shadow, Storm Shadow. Storm Shadow. They had that dude. Because that dude that plays Storm Shadow is on a, like, a pretty good show on Netflix called Warrior that I ain't never seen. <laughs> and... How do you know it's good, then? That's what people said. <laughs> oh, okay. I watched <laughs> yeah, a bit said, of it. It's a pretty good show on Netflix, but I it's ain't got, never seen it's none gotten, of it. It got renewed. It has to be good. That's not the truth. Ooh, you know man. what I'm saying? But the they fact that they put... renewed a lot of things on Because Netflix. I think he was in a... Is that a Bruce Lee type of thing? I don't fucking know. All I know is that they didn't fight in this movie for real. It was so fucking corny. I liked the first G.I. Joe movie. Didn't take itself too seriously. It was a fun little ride. It wasn't a great movie, but it was a fun little ride. These niggas then butchered. <laughs> oh, my you God. You want to go see Shang-Chi with me? Yes. That's going to be a real fight. We going to do the movies? Oh, or is that Netflix? Oh, no. That's a that's going to the movies, movies. Oh, for real? When so, it's coming out? Shang-Chi is fisty cuts. It should be coming out pretty soon. Let's go. You go, they about to be out here throwing bows. What you looking at me like that for, Tony? Because pretty soon it's not a, a time at all. It should be coming well, out. It's soon. just like, you better. Pretty soon could be three months from now, end of the year. Yeah. You remember that movie I told you about? No. <laughs> yeah, Shane Chi. Oh, <laughs> the shit you said in the summer? September yeah. 3rd, 2021. It's the month of my birthday. The month of your birthday? Yes, September 3rd. It's Let's 14 go. days from my birthday. Let's go, Charles. We can hate it together if it's terrible. Oh, I mean, it's a kung fu movie. I'm only gonna hate it so much. Man. I love all cool kung fu movies. It's it's my entire inspiration for wanting to punch people. And then guess who was in there? You know the guy from the Ray Eco. I don't know his last yeah. name. He was in this movie doing absolutely nothing, Charles. And I'm like hyping my friend, like, "Hey, look at him. This nigga about to go well. Like he in the red. He did nothing. <laughs> I'm like, this is not a good introduction. I am so sorry. Please, please understand. He's way better than this. Nah. That, and I'm like, he was like, I don't know. He's like, I don't know if I'm gonna check out these movies. I'm like, you have to believe me. Please no believe me. There's no real gain in watching the three G.I. Joe movies, two of the other the other two G.I. Joe movies that exist, I do believe. Yeah, they're not good. Like the first one I had one. I didn't see the well, second one. And, uh, yeah, like it was a fun movie. Like it was stupid, but it, it was fun. <laughs> and then the third one is this. Mm-hmm. It's just like I don't know. I just have more emotional investment inside of all the Marvel movies, but it's like it. But also, GI Joe was another attempt to re, to like recreate the Marvel thing because it's like, oh, this yeah. is a property with things that kids look like. Let's do it. <laughs> it don't be the same though. I mean, that's the funny thing, and that's ultimately the thing that no one seems to understand. And I think there is an artistry to actually building up a universe, and it's because it's not easy. And it's a very patient thing that one must do. You can't rush it. 
We've seen what happens when you rush it. You end up with like the Snyderverse, which did not go out particularly well. That was creatively bankrupt. Because Zack Snyder lightweight corny. Lightweight. (laughs) Zack Snyder gets on there. He made like a couple of good movies. He didn't really like he made 300. (sighs) Yeah. You know what he figured out? Filter's good. This nigga was slow motion some sex scenes in a fucking heartbeat. <laughs> nigga, <laughs> he will fucking make Just some like, nipples erect. <laughs> Zach, you like, fucking perfect. Stop making those nipples erect. It's just like, what are you about to do? You know, about you to slow this shit slow down, is. right? Either you somebody's to about to die down. or someone's trying to, to slow trying this to shit fuck. down. Fuck you talking about? It's just like, well, just super slowed down. Show you what the fuck. What do you want? <laughs> but yeah, oh, uh-huh. which is the Zack Snyder universe? Snyderverse is the it was the attempt at the recreation of the Marvel universe, except for for DC. Yeah, he tried to so, do the Justice League and shit. Right? Aquaman, yeah. Batman versus Superman. Ooh, that was uh, shitty. What was that? That that the first Justice Superman League. movie with Zod in it? Yeah. Uh, Did there they? was no independent Batman movie I guess uh, Justice League Wonder Woman yeah, that Wonder was all Woman supposed to one. be like a part of the DC universe it was architected by Zack Snyder and it didn't work out as well as the one for Marvel because he didn't lead up with all the different people yeah and that's kind of the reason why I kind of get Corsese to some degree it's just like you know getting tricking this mi- there's only like yes, the masses are dumb, mm-hmm. but the masses know when they don't like something. <laughs> oh, I'm not watching like Justice League because, like, honestly, I could watch Justice League Unlimited and then get and get more than that. I got of that. It's like I left just I left that Justice League movie. It's just like this is like a two hour episode of Justice League Unlimited, <laughs> <laughs> except for not quite as enjoyable. Gal Gadot's cute though. I ain't never seen those things because I'm not a Zack Snyder fan. Like it's just I, like I'm not about to watch this. If you are movies. a woman, there's a lot more eye candy in this to, for you than uh Marvel. There's, but inside of this, it's just like oh, there's no reason for me to be here. It's just like I don't really like this Superman. I don't really like this Batman. Uh, Jason Momoa makes a pretty good Aquaman. Uh, Ezra Miller out here power bombing women, so I don't really know how to feel about that. <laughs> uh, was he a good Flash? Got? Gal Gadot is also is also an Israeli was a, is part of Israeli special forces. That means she's probably killed Palestinians, possibly somewhere inside of her lifespan. Don't really know how to feel about that. Uh, also, I'm pretty sure Amazonians don't save their armpits, but whatever. It's just like, that was another yes, one. I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> Yes, I do. 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 It's like, don't be out here trying to get God or not, not to save her arm. Yeah, yeah, that's nasty. That's not her Amazon role. Uh, yeah, that's whatever. nasty, Charles. What are you well, talking about? They shave. It was just like, but whatever. Who else is actually a part of that? Oh, uh, you got Flash. You got Batman. You got, so it was like, I'll, oh, yeah, Cyborg. Cyborg was fine, relatively. But they really didn't do that much with him. I watched the redo of it. Mm-hmm. You did more with Cyborg than that. But Skyborg from Doom Patrol is technically better than Cyborg from uh that. Watch Doom Patrol. It's on HBO Max. It's it's a good time. It's I like have HBO Max. It's with all the emotional grounding. I might reactivate my HBO Max pretty soon because it seems like no one else had it. <laughs> <laughs> so I got rid of it. It's just like, nope, nobody's using this. And I got some complaints about that from errant people who apparently were using my HBO Max. Coverage. See, that's why I think DC could kind of pick up as what Marvel was lacking at. If they just told, like, for real good, compelling ass stories. Character pieces. <clears throat> but they're tr- they're too busy trying to recreate what someone else did. Yeah. Spider-Man's always a good character piece, though, but that's also because Spider-Man's Spider-Man, though. Well, Spider-Man like maybe getting on my nerves with that old 15-year-old boy shit. <laughs> just, I know he's 15, but also I'm fucking tired, like... Yo, nervous ass. Get the fuck out of here, yo. But when he comes Spider-Man, great. But when he Peter Parker, God, he is anxiety-inducing. Exactly. That's the point. <laughs> I know he did a good job with that. Was like, like, why are you anxiety-inducing? Oh, I have a broken... <laughs> it was just like, I mean, he calms down when he hits college, but he's also dated a lot more women at that point. And he's just 
I mean, he's worried about it, but mm-hmm. he's also worried about it because, like, spoilers. Gwen Stacy dies. <laughs> <laughs> we know that don't we a lot of people oh I, was like, I know, know that I know Gwen well, Stacy like, dies but the death of Gwen Stacy is actually going to pivot that's the reason why I know Zendaya is eventually going to get kicked out because the death of Gwen Stacy is just too important mm-hmm. because it changes the way that Spider-Man pretty much activates it's just like it turns his help it like multiplies his self loathing by like 100 mm-hmm. it's just like everything I do somebody dies somebody's gonna die i gave my grandmother a blood transfusion my blood's apparently radioactive it's that damn near killed her i had to make a deal with the devil to undo my my marriage to my fiance just because the devil's a dick yeah what if they make the emo peter parker again <laughs> you're gonna I don't see the, you're gonna Spider- see emo here <laughs> remember that nigga was dancing too <laughs> Dude, 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 dude. Feeling I'll good. never forget the feeling moment real, I saw real that. Good. Feel, Remember oh, that dude. nigga would flip his hair? <laughs> he would flip his fucking bang. We was like, what happened that to is Peter? Pete, that is Pete Wentz. Yo, I don't Peter. know who the fuck that shit was. That, that is shit a made me basis laugh. from Fallout Boy. So fucking hard when I first seen that. He's walking down the street, and then they had the nerves to make it seem like bitches was really feeling that shit. Like, they would look women, at him and go, Ooh. Women like confidence. <laughs> no, I don't know what the fuck that white boy was doing. Man, you old dudes be out here getting it. They do, they be getting it in. Yep. Uh, I'm he's so in touch with his emotions. No. I only feel gray. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, he wears black nail polish and black jeans. And so th- edgy, and he has those. He has that uh pinstripe black and white shirt. Oh my god, I'm so fucking edgy, Edge Lord. <laughs> yeah, Ooh, I'm so black. I don't think I have anything else to say about content though. Me either. This is the dark. All right, we're done because Charles is over there whispering into his microphone like creep. Tell so, me your dark poetry, Charles. Well, this is Charles. Unconscious Reconstruction. Charles. Charles is a hermaphrodite. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Why are you insulting hermaphrodites like that? <laughs> like being a hermaphrodite a bad thing, Tony? No, I was just making a general statement. <laughs> I mean, dude, he's out here looking at my genitalia, apparently. That's weird. No. <laughs>